Can you all see that okay? Yeah, very good. Um, as Karen said, um, if you've any questions, if you want to put them into the, the, um, the chat, um, I'll, I'll keep an eye on when the questions coming in and I'll answer them as I go along, if that's okay. Just with so many people on, 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 on lines nice, um, uh, you're getting crazy for, for asking questions. So we just put them in the chat function and we, we, I'll get some short courses towards um, of the workshop. So, okay, so the, um, the workshop tonight is on uh, how to prepare grant applications online. And the, the, the purpose of this is to look at the difference between a normal grant application and an online, online grant application and, and why it's important to look at um, what's involved in, in both. Um, just as, because there's a lot of people on tonight that haven't been on before, that maybe have not met me, I'll just be quick bit of background to who I am. So my name is Tom O'Leary. Um, my company is O'Leary & Associates Training and Consultancy Limited. Uh, based out of, um, currently based out of home in, in, in North Ferry and we have offices in Tralee and the Stowe also. Um, I work primarily with uh, community voluntary organisations and not-for-profit organisations and social enterprises. Over the last 20 years, primarily looking at these business studies, strategic planning, um, grant applications, um, business planning um, to assist groups get products off the ground and get them funded. Um, so a big part of what I do is, 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 is grant applications with groups, um, either assisting them with the application or doing the applications for them. So what I've taken is my experience and learning over the last um, 20 years, really, of, of, of working on applications and condensing that into an hour and a half of a workshop in terms of giving you the ideas, hints and tips that, that, that we use to um, successfully secure funding for, for various different groups. So um, as I said, tonight's going to be very, as, as Carolyn said earlier on, it's going to be very workshop. Um, we're also on two applications that are currently coming up um, with Kerry County, County, County Council. So the Community Services, sorry, Community Sports Fund and the Community Activities Fund. Um, so we look at those applications in a bit more detail later on because I'm conscious that the lobby would, would be looking to apply for apply for those grants um, before the deadline, which is now the 28th of February. So I'll cover those as a practical example uh, towards the end of the workshop. Okay, so the um, the application process itself, I suppose, and, and, and the grant application process for both traditional paper-based grants that you would be mailed in or posted in, um, and all the online applications, the, the, the process is pretty much the same. So some of you might be on, on the other workshops we've done in terms of how to prepare for grant applications, and just give a quick reminder of that. So you basically two types of grants uh, that come up um, you know, throughout the year. Um, one would be specific grants for things like pilot projects, once off funding, um, like the, for example, the local um, authorities water program, or the ones that we're looking at tonight, the community support fund, or the community activities fund. So there, there are specific grants that come up, they're for you know, one-off projects and that, are, that, that people apply for. Then you've got annual grants, so some organizations are funded through core funding, through the HSC, for example, section 38, section 39. And you might have organizations that are, that are funded under public through the community support, through the services program. Um, and there's also grants like two step of family resources, et cetera. So there are annual grants that be that come in every year, you have to reapply for them and, and put plans in, in place for them. Some basic steps regarding grants, whether it be online or your traditional kind of offline grants. Um, make sure you research what grants are available for your type of project. So there's lots of opportunities out there for grants coming up constantly. Uh, some are relevant to your organization, some aren't relevant to your organization. If they're not relevant, it's a complete waste of time, your time and the assessor's time if you're applying for grants that your, your, your organization is not eligible for. And they make it very clear in their guidelines what, what projects they support, what organizations they support, and what they won't support. Um, be aware of deadlines and criteria. So sometimes deadlines change. So again, the deadline for, for the um, community uh, support funds and the community activities funds now being extended to February 28th. So, but keep in mind what, what's happening with deadlines and again, make sure that you're, you're, you're ready and you, you've got time to prepare and get the applications in on time. Um, look at the criteria. So read the criteria properly. Look at what the aims of the grant are, you know, what the organization has given the funding, what they want to see done with the grants. How does it support their overall aims? How does your project match their aims? And again, if they don't, if your project has nothing to do really with the fund, um, I question why you'd be looking at doing the application in the first place. Again, 
only go after what funding is relevant to the opposition. Um, so the other thing then would be like in terms of consultation process, again, having the consultation process done, have a needs analysis done, um, you know, always have a project that you've identified as a need for. So if you're just applying for grants, putting together a project just for the sake of drawing down the grant, that's that's not a, a good a good starting point because even if you were to get the grants, uh, for some reason, uh, you now got to create this project to, to fulfill the, the, the criteria and the, the, the agreement with the, the funder. Um, and that just adds work to, you know, uh, an organization adds other costs as well, which, you know, is going to be more problematic than if you didn't get the grant in the first place. So we only go for projects that you've identified the need for that you actually want to do rather than just chasing grants for the sake of it. Um, have all necessary documentation on file, and we covered that this evening um, because it's really important for your online applications because you have to upload um, the documentation um, in digital format um, to the various different online portals. So if you have um, your files everywhere, if you've got your, your documentation all over the place in hard copy format and digital format, and you know, some of it with the accountant, some of it with the solicitor, some of it with someone in the organization, um, you're not going to have the, the documentation ready for when you need it. Right, so have that already in place. Um, we would always we would always recommend having the generic application complete. So the key there is that basically once you do one application, the pretty much all about all eight percent of the information in each application is pretty much standard. So it's generic information that's requested and required. So if you've done one very detailed application, it's gone mute. Oh. Okay. Uh, Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm not sure where the music is here or where. Okay, so the music is here. Did you get that, that part of the, the covering there? I did. Did anybody else miss anything there? Okay. No, uh, no, we could hear Tom all the time. Oh, th thanks. Yeah. Thanks, John. Sorry about that. My, my, in my side. Okay. It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Very fine. So again, having a generic app, generic application form uh, completes um obviously particularly one that's been successful. Use that as as your your guide and template going forward because again, as I said, like you know, a lot of information in the application forms are similar. So it's a kind of matter of cutting and pasting a lot of it and just speeds up the whole process. Um, and you know, again, if you're even not applying for funding at this stage, I would I really recommend everyone to kind of do a, a kind of a dummy application. So there's ones kind of sitting there ready to go um, and ready to, 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 to complete when, when you have to apply for a grant. So a lot of the work we do with organizations that are that you know we've done work with before, um, a lot of the information we already have from them. So it speeds up the process greatly when, when, we're, when we're applying for other grants for them afterwards. Um, so again, complete the application form, provide all technical and support documentation. So if the funder is asking for specific documents to be submitted as part of the application, make sure you submit everything that's asked for. If you don't, uh, because you forgot to do it or you just you bothered doing it or you just didn't correctly, the application won't be assessed at all. So you're going to waste it at a lot of time and effort. Um, in writing a grant application, it won't even be looked at because you haven't ticked all the right boxes and support and supplied all the right documentation. So. It's really important with any application that, that you spend a bit of time in preparing for the application and you have everything kind of ready to go. Um, so it just, it just makes the, the application process less, less, less stressful and it makes you, know, you make sure that you have a kind of very good, well-written, well-presented um, application that's supported by all the relevant documentation. So it's really just about planning more than anything else. Okay, so. Um, as I said, with the grants planning, um, again, you know, keep an eye on what grants are coming up. Um, we just use a simple template like this in terms of the name of the grants, the source of the grants, who the contact person is for the grant, what project you're going to be, be applying for, what are the application deadlines, what information do you require, um, what actions do you take to complete the application, especially if you're if you're applying for grants um, as part of a team or if there's number of people supporting your grant application, who's doing what, you know, so you're doing a duplication, let's say there's three people talking to the accountant to get the annual accounts, that sort of thing. So it's basically well organized and well planned. And again, set of deadlines well in advance of the of the, the deadline for the grant so that you're not rushing last minute to get the application in. 
um, which is really important because you know a stressful application process normally leads to a bad application, um, and a bad application normally leads to uh, a no from the funder. So it's a lot of money in some cases, even if it's a small amount of money, it's worth spending the time and effort doing it right. And the source information on grants, Kerry PPN website, um, is updated regularly with, with, with grants that are open for, um, for, for organizations. So keep an eye on that. Um, you, you should get some newsletters if you're registered with PPN anyway. So again, look at the newsletter, see what grants are available and what are coming up. Funding point, um, again, is what we use. It's a database a registration. Um, you pay down your registration fee and you get access to all the open funds that are, that are coming up. Um, and links to various different criteria and the application process. Active link the same way. And then the last one there is actually, particularly for environmental projects, but it's actually very good uh, database as well of, of, of um, funding that's available. Um, so if you keep an eye on all these um, on a regular basis, you'd be aware of what's coming up in terms of grants for your organization. Again, get on the very various different mailing lists of the government departments. So when they announce the grants, process opens, they normally do press release and they will uh, notify you if you're on their email list as well. So you do lots of information coming on board of the various grants that are coming up. Okay, um, so then online application. So that's just generic information for any sort of grant application, but primarily for online. Um, and some of you are probably familiar with doing online applications at this stage because it kind of, they, it's not brand new, it's been happening for a while, but it, it's kind of moving towards and the norm now where every application is going to be online. Um, and that's, there's, you know, there's, there's, there's pros and cons with that. Um, I love them to be perfectly honest. Um, they're a lot easier to, to use and you're, you're, you're there to keep people focused in terms of what they're supposed to be doing and what they're supposed to be including. So basically um, you've got two types of online applications. One is through a dedicated portal. So it's like a basically website or, um, a web portal as part of an organization that you go into where you complete the application form on that portal um, and you go through the various different sections online um, and then you have some applications that are are you know pdf documents or word documents that are just emailed in so you, you complete them on a word document or a pdf and you save them and you just basically attach them to an email so they are online because they're not posted in they're not hard copy but they're not necessarily um, a, a read online application, the read online application is where you're actually completing the application form on an online portal. And that's where people kind of get kind of, you know, have difficulties if they're not used to using these things. Um, again, all your supported documentation have to be uploaded in digital format. Because you're not submitting a hard copy application, you, you can't obviously submit the other documentation in hard copy format either. So you can't like put on the online portal saying, you know, um, we post in our annual accounts or our memos or after the association or our lease agreement or insurance quotations or whatever it might be. Uh, it all has to be submitted at the one time on the portal. So if you don't have your relevant documentation um, in digital format, it means you've got to scan them and convert them to PDF documents so that they are in digital format. Pretty much everything now is in digital format anyway. So um, like whoever's doing, doing your company, um, uh, memos after the association or constitution, they should be in digital format from the, the companies that did them unless they're done years and years and years ago, then you have to scan them. Um, your accountant will have your annual accounts in digital format and email you PDF version of them. And so a lot of your information that you'll be getting will be in digital format that will be emailed to you. So um, it shouldn't be a huge piece of work to, to, to convert them all into digital format. Um, Basically, with the online applications, the biggest change really is that they're more condensed. So they limit the amount of words or characters that you can put in on each section. So that's a good thing because well, it's a good and bad thing. It's a good thing if you have nothing to say because <laughs> you don't have much room to put in anything anyway. It's difficult if you have a lot to say because you're limited in terms of what you can say on the application form. Um, some are fairly generous in terms of their word count and how many uh, words or characters you can use. Other applications like sports capital application, that portal is very limited in terms of the amount of information you can provide, which sometimes make it difficult because you're trying to, you know, give an entire project what you're trying to do in, in, in a very, very short paragraph. So your editing skills come into play. Um, the normal for your before you put in your location details, just giving an air code or giving your, your your address, whatever it might be. Um, now they usually have kind of built in Google Maps, so you can basically pick your location on a map. 
Um, and you're that true either and also in your airports. You can you, you normally is embedded it embeds Google Maps on the application form to show exactly where you're located. Um, they look for digital signatures, so obviously you're not signing anything in hard copy format. So it's always good to have a digital digital signature ready. So simple way to manage this basically get a blank piece of paper, um, white piece of paper, sign your name to the white piece of paper, take a photograph of it, and then save that photograph as as a as a as a, um, uh, an image on your and put onto your laptop or onto your PC and have it there that you can then embed afterwards onto the application form. Some applications you can actually sketch your signature as well. So and then some some applications will the signature is that you just put in your name and you you, 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 you take it to the declaration box and that acts as a signature. Um, the one thing with the online applications is that the, there is a strict deadline. Well, there's a strict deadline with all applications, but with the online applications, once the deadline is reached, so let's say it's five o'clock, February the 28th, um, at five o'clock, February 28th, that portal closes. So you actually can't access the application form after that. So you have no option. So, you know, with a, with a, with a, an email application, you can always submit it maybe a couple minutes later and say, look, if, you know, a symptom because we get you on a couple minutes later. If it's a, an application that's going to be hand delivered, again, you know, once the office is open, you get it in, you know, in time, you'd probably be okay. But with the online application, once this, the deadline's reached, it shuts down and you're, you, you have no option but get back in there. Um, so, again, once the application is submitted, you can't edit it. Now, with most applications online, you can go back and forth and edit it. So, you can, you can, you can um, you know, do a bit of it today and then go back to tomorrow and add more to it and go back to the following day and add more. Um, you, know, you can go in and out once you don't submit it. Once it's submitted, you can't go back and, and change it. And that's, so it's important you've done it right first time. Um, you know, this is the same with any application. If you send in a hard copy application, you can't just draw it in and say, can I get that back off here, please? And, and you know, and get the bottom tickets and start making changes to it. Um, you know, you, you've, got, you've got one chance for you to get an application in. And it's got to be done right first time. You can't go back and change it. Um, the advantages, disadvantages, I suppose, really, the, the, the biggest advantages that can be shorter, so um, less content to be included. So, again, some, some of the older applications were very detailed, lots of sections, lots of questions. Sometimes the questions were asked in different ways, which was annoying people. And, and you spend a lot of time trying to, you know, to write an essay, um, putting the application together. Um, it's easier to manage the process. Because your everything's online, so you, all your files are there ready to upload. Um, so this, there's less, you know, it's less onerous when you're trying to when you're trying to basically do a kind of written application. You're trying to basically guess. Um, when you're trying to get documentation ready, and you're trying to put them together into file. You know that could be a bit messy, especially with the number of people working on it. Whereas everything's online, you can you can manage it better. Um, teams can work on the application, so. And you know, a couple of people can have access to the online portal and can go in and do different pieces of it. I don't recommend that because you get kind of all over the place. And some, some person might write in a different way than another person, or there might be you know repetition there. So what we tend to do is guess if we're working with teams on this, we get team members to do certain sections of the application, but then one person is responsible for editing the whole thing and putting it onto the onto the portal. Okay, so just it's just important that. A number of people can get involved, a number of people can be supporting the application, but one person is responsible for putting it all together. It just makes it easier. Um, and there's obviously responsibility of that person, but sometimes that's better than having four or five people trying to do the one thing. Um, it levels the playing field. And what I mean by that is that in the past, you had organizations that would pay people like me, then consultants through the applications for them. And because we were being paid through the applications, obviously we had to do a really, really good professional job on them. And then other organizations who didn't have the funding to pay for someone, were doing themselves. Well, in some cases, they were as good or better than, than professionally done applications. But you had like a lot of applications that were put together where you'd have like a large file with you know well laid out um, proposals and supporting business plans and all this kind of stuff, right? And very, very detailed. Um, because the online applications are condensed and you can only put up certain information anyway, and you're only locked in certain amount of information, that does lay, level the playing field. In other words, no matter how you know good you are graphics and make things look nice, you don't have that opportunity to do that on an online application. It's everyone's working from the same format. So it does it does level the playing field in some way. Some applications have auto-fill sections, uh, which makes it easier to complete. So for example, in some applications where you're in the finance part of it, you put in the amount you're looking for and matching funds, that's calculated automatically. And in some cases, it'll actually have, if you put in the wrong numbers or if it doesn't make sense, it will kind of come up as an error. So it doesn't allow you to progress 
because you, they know if you made a mistake. Um, so again, because it's automated, it does speed up the process, but also allows you to 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 um, spot errors uh, before you go before you proceed. Um, again, so in some cases, the grant portal um, is the one file for everything. So let's say you apply for grants and you get approval for the grants. The approval documents uh, are within the portal. Um, your 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 drawdown um, um, administration is on the portal as well. So all the files you're uploading, it's all uploaded to the same portal. So Pubble with a similar with systems like that, where you're uploading everything to the one portal. The sports capital funding as well. If you apply for sports capital funding, it's all done through the, the OSPR system, and everything is on there. So your previous applications, all your documentation, all the the correspondence from the departments in terms of contracts, all that, it's all in the one place. So it makes it easier for you to manage the the actual the drawdowns as well and all the paperwork in one space. Uh, the other advantage is that it, I suppose it 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 kind of um, forces groups to be more efficient in completing the application. Model. What I mean by that is that in some cases organizations provide very limited amount of detail on the application form. So it's like you know the question might be what are you going to do with funding? Uh, we're going to you know. Um, increase our facilities, full stop. That's it, no more information provided. So the person's reading this application can, I know what they're doing, but I don't know why they're doing it or how, what does that mean in terms of what facilities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then on the other side of the scale, you've organizations write four pages of what are you going to do to funding? And that's bores people to tears because it's way too much information about the project. With the online applications, it, 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 you're forcing editing down to, you know, being very clear in terms of what you're looking for and why you're looking for it, and does help people um, come up with a better pitch. So, like you know, kind of very well edited pitch as to why they should be be getting the funding as opposed to not be getting the funding. So, there are the advantages. The disadvantages really is um, alongside that is the work count and the limited work counts sometimes make it difficult to get your message across. So, if you have a very complex project or very detailed project that you're trying to you know explain to someone. And you're limited to maybe you know 500 words or sorry 500 characters that that can cause problems for a lot of groups because they, they're not able to get their message across properly or there's more information they want to give but they can't because there's not enough room um, it does require great greater editing skills um, some of the online portals have very limited editing format options so you can't put in bullet points or numbering or it's hard to justify in terms of columns and that or the, the actual the way it's presented um, so what we recommend for that is that we do the applications online on sorry on Word first. So we do uh, the application form. We actually copy the application form, with a question by question, put out the Word document, and then complete the application form in Word format. So we can edit it in Word. We can do spell check in Word because again, not the portals don't have spell check. And if your spelling is as bad as mine, that's, that's a good thing if you can spell check it. Um, you can also put in bullet points. And also, when you can put in, you can check the word count. So you can actually edit it and see if you have the, the right amount of words or characters before you cut and paste it into the application form. It's also the way of sharing the document as well. If you don't get access to the portal, like your login details to loads of people to go in and to maybe make a mistake, you can give them the word version of the application form. They can edit it, they can change it. And then you just basically take the final word version, cut and paste it into the application form on the portal. So it's something that we always do. Um, regardless of what the application is or how detailed it is, we always do the more first. The, the other reason why we do that is that a lot of times a portal, once you submit the application, you lost it, and you can't go back in and, and, and have a copy of what you submitted. Okay, and if you don't have a copy of what you submitted in terms of application form, and let's say you get approved for the application and you get approved for the grant, but you forgot what you apply for, which if you're applying for other grants, that won't be unusual, or it was a long time ago when you just can't remember what you put in for. Or you go back next year and you're reapplying, but you forgot what you applied for last year. Um, that's difficult. That's difficult. So what we do is we do the application form on Word, save the Word version of that application. So we would copy the application form we submitted previously. Okay. So if a group comes back to me next year and says, Tom, we want you to apply again for whatever grant, I'm thinking, geez, I forgot what I applied last year for them. They have no copy of the application form. I don't copy the application form. That's a bit of a disaster. So once I have it in Word format, I can go back and check it, regardless if I've saved it or not on the on the system. Okay, so again, the editing skills don't worry about them on the, on the portals, edit it in, in, in a Word document. Um, you might you will require passwords and login. Now, that might sound like a fairly straightforward thing. The amount of people that, that register 
on for online applications. I forget what passwords they use. I forget what logins they use. Is is is, is bananas because right? it's always forget it. Um, if I if I'm doing an application with someone, um, I get the I accept that their passwords and login details. But people come back to me and say, "Tell me, I can't remember what my login details are." Let's say you're 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 working on an application form, and for some reason you forgot your login details, and it's the day of the the deadline, and you can't access the the, the portal because you can't figure out the login. Um, and you contact the department and you might get an answer from them or they might email you back. It's probably too late at that stage. So again, if you're doing this, again, have your 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 notes in terms of what you need to do for the application and write down what your password is, what your login details are, access the portal. Very important. In some cases, don't look for login details. More often than not, they'll do well. The last one, or then sorry, next one is 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 broadband. This is probably the biggest challenge for a lot of people. Um and it's not so much that you know I've got slow broadband, so that means I'll be doing the application very slowly because it takes forever to go from section to section. The biggest issue really with the broadband is let's say you let the last minute or the last day to, to submit your application and your broadband's down and you know internet connection or your power is down, you've no power. Um that's you know that's a scary place to be because now you're stuck with an application form you can't submit because you've no way of submitting it. So you don't leave it to last minute. Um, what we tend to recommend people to do is, you know, if, they, if they're in an area where there's broad, bad broadband or poor broadband, or they don't have very good broadband in the house, whatever, go to a place where you, you've got decent broadband. So like a library or a hotel or somewhere where you can get decent enough broadband where you're gonna, it's gonna be fairly, you know, guaranteed that it will go. Um, I know of a lot of instances where people have rang me and said like, you know, we, we, can we get an extension Tom because um, or broadband start dropping and we can't we can't get into the uh, we can't get online. There's nothing to do about it. Like the deadline of five o'clock is is, is 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 there. Like you're not going to be able to get an extension on because your broadband's not working. So again, it, it does require that you've got good access to to these broadband. Um, you need you need to have some you need to be like a, a software developer, but you need to have some knowledge of IT. So some people are 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 fairly used to working through various different applications online or apps or whatever. They're used to uploading files and saving files. Um, and moving between applications. So, you know, it shouldn't be that great a deal for a lot of people, but some people in the store use computers a lot and they find this very, very difficult to do. And they're kind of terrified of, of all this kind of, you know, how to upload a file and have I done it correctly or, or incorrectly. The only way around that really is 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 trying to find someone in the organization that that finds has no issues with, with, with using a PC or, you know, they're familiar with online applications, they're familiar with online tools, they're familiar with file uploading and saving files, et cetera, because they can do it for you. Um, they might be providing the content, but they'll be providing the kind of the, the, the technical support for it. Um, but like, you know, they, they, they do try to make it as easy as possible, but you need to have some basic knowledge of, 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 of navigating around the PC or laptop to do it. Um, there is strict deadlines. Again, that's, that's both for online and offline applications. Um, and then you know, so some applications can't. So that, that's what I mentioned earlier. Some applications cannot be printed for sharing purposes. That can be a problem. Let's say if you're working with a, if you're on a board and you're you're a member of the board or you're a coordinator or an administrator or whatever or treasurer, and it's your job to be, you've been told I want this application has to be done, and the app the board wants to review the application before it goes before it goes in. Um, you know, if you're not able to print that application off, then you can't. Can't present them to show them and review it, or can't email about them. And that goes back to the point I'm saying about doing it on Word, so you can actually use the Word document as the kind of the review uh, draft document that need to be reviewed and edited and added to or or or, or changed. Um, if it's on the system, um, that's difficult to do. Okay. Um, the key thing with with online grant applications is, as with any other application, but particularly with with online. Is that you need to have all your documentation in one place. Okay. This 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 can be you know problematic if you're doing a lot of grants and applying for a lot of grants um, and various different grants to various different departments, it can get very confusing very, very quickly, especially if they're in a row at the same time, because you're gonna forget what's what's what and what grant we're applying for and who we're applying to, what they need and stuff, right? Uh, and you might have a number of projects. So for example, um, if you're working on a number of different projects and you're applying for one project specifically, and you're required to have three quotations that's relating to that project, but you've got a load of other quotations for other projects, um, what happens there is that you might submit the wrong documents with, with the application. So 
like an example of that where, where we would have had done um, many sports grants in the past, sports capital grants in the past, um, we might have asked for a club to send us a, um, a copy of their planning permission, for example, of their planning reference number. And what we get from their architect might be planning reference number for another project completely. So it might be nothing to do with the sports field. It might be an apartment block or a house that the person's building or something because they haven't checked the reference number. So we'll check the reference number. Um, we might get a quotation sent to us that was a quotation that was dated last year. So it might be it might be out of date and they sent us the wrong quotation. Or they might send us a set of um, accounts for you know that aren't up to date or they're uh, for a different account they might have or whatever it might be. So what we do is we set up a project file for every single grant application. Okay, so and in that project file is only the documentation that's relevant to that, that project. So for example, your members and actors association. Or your constitution is a generic standard document that's going to be the same it's not going to change from grant to grant but we still will put in a copy of it into that project file your your accounts from your accountant won't change but again we put in the copy of the accounts into that file and then we put in the specific documentation like your quotations that are relevant to that project into that project file okay so we're not going back and forth between different files trying to find okay there is one file we need to upload there's another file we need to upload and it gets messy we have everything saved in one location, which is very, very easy. So we've got two applications open, the online portal and our, 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 um, our file documents where we can just go in and, 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 and download the relevant documentation. Um, if you're working kind of off-site or remotely, or, or if you're a volunteer and you're, you're based at home and you're doing this in, your, in the evening time after you finish work and you're, you're doing the application on behalf of your organization, um, have the, the, the project file on, on, in the clouds on one on a OneDrive or Google Drive or, or um, Dropbox, something like that, because you might, you know, you might be around to, you might be in holidays when this 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 application has to be submitted, and you're the one that's got all the documentation in on file on your laptop or on your PC or in your on your hard drive or in a USB stick or something. And let's say you're over in Spain having a having a nice cold drink. And the rest of the volunteers on the committee are frantically looking for documentation and don't have access to it. Having everything on a, on a shared drive uh, means that everyone can access that, that, that project file. So it's again, it's important to do. As well as if you lose your laptop or it's stolen or if it's broken or whatever, uh, and again, the documentation is, is, is shared essentially on a shared drive. Again, what we normally would do, no, we don't recommend this for your, your bank details or anything like that in terms of your, 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 your other passwords, but for any grants, Keep, use the same login and password details so they don't change them. So if your login and password is the same for all grant applications, then, then you won't forget it. Um, again, agree on who's going to be the contact. Um, very important again, so if, if you're doing a grant application online, who's the contact person that's, that name, that, whose name goes on the application? Um, make sure that you use an email that's going to be checked regularly. So a lot of people use their their you know, Gmail or Yahoo mail or whatever that, they check it maybe once every now and again. But all the correspondence will be will be the email to you. So if you're not checking that email and there might be other information sought or you might have to respond to, um, you know, you might be awarded the grant, but you've got to, you know, accept the grant um, approval within a certain time frame, um, and you haven't checked that email, then you're going to be solving um, We were working with a group place recently who got uh, substantial funding um, about 20,000 euros, and they, they nearly lost the funding because they were due to, if they want an extension on their grant, they had to respond by I think, June 1st last year. And it was sent an email that the person hadn't used in a while, and she didn't spot the email until I think, July. Um, and um, she went to look for extension and she couldn't because she missed the deadline because no one checked the email it was in Delta. So make sure that the email that you're given is one that you check regularly. Um, Again, agree who's admin or editing access. So just on that as well, if you're using a work email, so let's say you're volunteering and you're using your work email, your company email, but your, 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 your daytime email uh, for correspondence, a lot of companies will have fairly strict firewalls. Um, so anything coming from an unusual source, and if it's say an automated email from a, from a department or whatever, or from the portal, uh, it might go into spam or might get stopped. So again, use, you know, I would be, you know, use your own personal email rather than company email. Um, again, agree who's got editing and admin access to the application. That's really important because, um, again, you'd want loads of people 
having access to this because if everyone's editing and everyone's kind of like you know giving their 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 say and having their their input um not saying that you shouldn't be consulting with everyone but having everyone kind of responsible for putting the application together you're going to have a fairly patchwork of an application that won't read very well so again have one person that's responsible for for editing the final document and getting it in um highlight the deadline date on the diary so again with deadline dates, you know, put that on your diary. If you're using a diary, your your car back diary or your Google diary, or whatever diary you're using. If you've got a wall chart in your office, put on the wall, put a post note on your PC, on your dashboard, your car, anywhere you can. Just don't forget the deadline because a lot of people think, ah, it's just two weeks time, three weeks time, a load of time. And next thing they realize, geez, the deadline's tomorrow and nothing done for it. You know, you need time to get these things put together. Uh, review the guidelines carefully and highlight key criteria and requirements. So what we do with the guidelines is we, we go to the guidelines, we highlight the key words and the key criteria that's going to be relevant to the application. So with, with an application for funding, they will always, when I say they, the funders will always highlight what they want to see, right? Um, they'll be very clear in terms of the type of projects, they'll be very clear in terms of the type of information they want, and their aims of the project. So you try to give that back to them. So if they're looking for X, Y, and Z, you give them X, Y, and Z. If you're looking for A, B, and C, you give them A, B, and C. So people just don't they can ignore the guidelines and I show this guidelines, like reading instructions, don't bother. Um, the criteria and the guidelines will guide you as to what information the funder is looking for and what information they'll be using to assess the application. So they'll be using certain criteria to assess the application and score the application. If you know what they are, you can now start manipulating, that's the word I use, manipulating the application to make sure it hits all the right words, hits all the right boxes for the person who's assessed the application. Okay, it's like you're applying for a job and on the job description says, must have great interpersonal skills, great IT skills, be a great person, whatever. Your, your CV should reflect those words, saying you know, great interpersonal skills, a proven track record and blah, 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 whatever it might be. So it's, you're giving them the words they want to hear and helping them assess your application saying, yeah, this application ticks all the right boxes. They're saying exactly what we want, we want to see. They're doing exactly what we want to do, okay? Because you read the criteria. And then highlight it, make sure you highlight it, make sure you give it back to them in terms of the words that are they, they put into their application form. Okay, so this is an example of a filing system. Um, and this is definitely what I, I don't mean what I did for, for the um, support fund for purpose of this, this, this workshop. So this is what I would do. So if I'm doing an application for an organization, um, I go into, I set the file, so demo grant files in this file, um, and I basically upload all the documentation that they're looking for. So on the criteria, they will tell me what uh, what what um, documentation they want uh, to be included in the application form, or what documentation that has to be on file in case they inspect it at a later date. So in some cases, they would say upload the following documentation as supporting documents, or they say tick all the boxes stating you have these documents on file that can be inspected at a later stage. Okay, so they look for a declaration that these things are in place. But what we do is normally we look about document documents that are looked for or sought, and we will come into this one file. So the, the accounts, the bank statements, um, memos after association and tax there, they're generic standard documents that won't change from, from application to application, but we still put them into this file, okay? The guidelines we put into it. So if we're going back checking what the guidelines are. We're not going back looking into websites and trying to find out where the guidelines are. We they're they're here. So everything to do with this everything to do with this application is in this application project file. Um, the guidelines, um, all quotations that are sought. So in this case, there's three quotations needed. These are the quotations. Um, you know, very clearly um, named as quotations. Um, the edit document is a document that we edit the application in. So that's the Word document that we would do up specifically for the application, edit the document, edit the application in that document, and then cut and paste from the document onto the online platform. The, in this case, there might be a feasibility study required, um, or there might be a feasibility study done on the project, and they might allow you to upload uh, supporting documentation like a business plan or a strategic plan or a feasibility study. Okay, so we're just pretending that there was a feasibility study done for this project. And it's there on the project file if we need to, to submit it. Okay. It's also handy as well because we might be taking wording from that feasibility study or might be taking sections of it and using the words from those sections to put into the application form. So this basically speeds up the process for us if we're, we're writing the application. So this is the project file. 
and this is this is really important because this saves you so much time and effort, but it also makes your your application process way more effective and way more efficient. Okay, so let's get into the habit of doing doing this. This will be shared. So this is shared in Google Drive. Um, I'm not sharing with anyone in myself, but it's a you with a, a team of people or, or a committee. They can all access this then on, on, on Google Share Drive and they can go in and get this information as well or they can add to it if they need to add to it. Okay, so for example, let's say you treat people on the uh, on, on the committee and Joe was to get a quote from the electrician and Bob was supposed to get a quote from the plumber and Mary was supposed to get a quote from the carpenter. Um, once they have those quotations, they can upload those quotes to this, this, this file here. Okay, so it makes a very, very efficient way of managing the application process. Now you might think, that's an offer of work. It's just not kind of very detailed. Look, this takes about 10 minutes. Um, you know, you're going to be, you might be applying for 10,000 euros. You know, you spend multiple hours collecting 10,000 euros uh, in normal fundraising, flag days, backpacking, whatever. Spending 10 minutes getting yourself organized is, is, is not less, you know, time consuming um, and would save you a lot of, a lot of, stress and pressure when it comes to the application form, but also make sure that your application form has been done very effectively and very efficiently. Okay, so really important. Um, then in terms of the portal, so most applications will have a portal or a hub where the applications are completed. I'll show you the one from Carry Cloud Council later on because um, there, there are basically two portals, one for the duty support fund, one for the community activities fund, um, both very, very similar. So it again proves the point where a lot of information that goes with one application is very generic and goes into the next application. Um, again, some, some portals will require registration or login details. So in some cases, you have to register first, and then you get sent login details. Um, and that's where you can make sure you keep those login details somewhere safe and you write them down to remember what they are. Um, again, uh, some some then will have a deadline. This is this caused, caused some problems for a lot of groups. In some cases, like the sports cap application, their OSPO system, you have to actually register to, to be on the system ahead of the deadline for the, app, the application itself. So like usually it's about maybe a month out, you have to register on the system and get approval, not approval, get your access codes, get onto the system, um, and then you can apply. So in a lot of cases, groups were looking at the deadline for the actual application for the grant, but didn't realize that they have to register beforehand I missed the registration deadline, so which meant that they couldn't apply at all. They could wait now until next year. Um, that's that's a kind of serious kick in the backside where you're you've got all this work done, and because you missed a deadline to register for them, you can't even go ahead and even apply for the for the for the grant. So always look at the criteria very very carefully, and and make sure there's no deadline. If you have to register, make sure there's no deadlines to register. If it's not clear on the criteria where it says you have to register. If you're not too sure, is there a deadline with that? Contact the, the, the department or whoever the funder is and say, look, is there, you know, can we register down time or is there a deadline before that certain date we need to register by? Okay, just be very careful with that because some groups get cut out with it. Um, so I suppose additional content then. So I'm going to go through an application form in a minute with you, but a lot of people ask me, you know, what should I put in in this section? What should I put in, in that section? What sort of information should I put in in the various different categories? And some people get confused in terms of, you know, what's been asked and what, what information or what, how much detail should provide on, on the application form. So certain things that, that get looked for um, usually with most applications is, is details of your previous grants, okay? So again, picture someone last minute that has put this application together, they left it to the last day, they're kind of stressed out about it, and then they come, they come to a question where it says, um, have you got, you know, have you received funding before from any organization? And they're like, well, we have. And the question doesn't ask, the, the answer isn't we have, the answer has to be, you know, they have to, they, you have to put in where you got the grant from, what date you got the grant, how much you get, and sometimes what it was used for. And then there's panic because the person has no idea how much grant they got approved for, when it was approved, and what it was used for. Then they're on the phone ringing the treasurer, ringing this person, that person, they don't know because they can't remember what was got and when it was got. And they start making up stuff. So it's happening. But we know we're going to grant. And sometime in 2020, we just put in 2020. Okay. Once you get a grant from any source, any organization, put together a file like this. It doesn't have to be a table like this to be a notebook, no matter what it is. Write down the grant that you got, um, where it was from. So let's say it was community support fund. 
the source carry count council, the date received, whatever date you received the grant, not the date you applied for, the date you received the grant, the purpose of the grant, and the amount. Okay, you can also put in additional information here in terms of the contract kind of person was fully drawn down, the values of the matching funds, etc. But the key things would be grant source, date received, purpose, and amount. Nearly every grant application will ask you for details of previous grants. You have to put it in. Okay, if you ignore it because you want the information, then it's an incomplete application. By doing this as you go along, as you get grants, it basically means that you have this information at your fingertips. It's cut and paste job again, then. So, what went from being a three hour, very stressful process of trying to find, looking through bank statements and ringing leader and ringing the council and ringing this person, that person, every other person to find out what you got, it takes five minutes. Okay, preparation, absolute key when it comes to, to applications. The next one is your organization structure. They look for that. Um, every pretty much every application will look for details of your of your, of your structure. Um, you might have room to put in an organization chart, so you can leave that out if it's not looked for. But certainly put in things about your experience, the track record of your organization, getting funding and managing funds and managing projects, developing projects, being a very innovative, you know, anything that can give you a higher status in their mind. Um, operation structure, so you know, have you got committees in place? Have you got staff? Have you got volunteers? You know, who's responsible for the operations of, of the organization on a day-to-day -day basis? Um, you know, management and evaluation procedures in place, and your your experience in managing public funds. Basically, what you're doing here is you're you're setting you as an organization to them. In other words, you're saying to them in this this section, look, you should support us. You should fund us because we're really really good at what we do. We have a proven track record. We've got experience, we can manage public funds, we can prove we've managed public funds, and you're the we're the best organization to go with. Okay. So you're selling yourself to that's what you're doing. Okay. Some people put in here that they put in, we're complimented by guarantee with seven directors, and we've got three committees. Full stop, you go out to the next section. That's not enough information. You've got to sell it. Okay. If they've given you 500 words or 100 words or 500 characters or whatever to, to, to sell yourself, use all those characters and put in what you do. Okay. If you don't have a track record, okay, that's going to be difficult if you're a new, a brand new group. But you know, the people that are on board will have experience, will have certain skills they can bring to the bring to the project. You've got to highlight that in this because this is the part where they're deciding. I like their project. I like what they're doing. I think their project is fantastic. I think what they're going to do with the money is great. But are they the best organization that we can trust to give the money to? They can't see you. They're not bringing it to an interview. The only time you can place, you can kind of sell yourself to them as a, as a good organization that they can trust is on in that section. Okay. So again, do it, do it kind of a, do up a paragraph, do up a couple of lines on it, um, edit it down and ask yourself the question. If I was reading this as a person who didn't do who we were, would I be impressed? If you're impressed, they should be impressed. Okay. If you're thinking, mm, not too sure, we're not really selling ourselves well here. They go back and rewrite it, but it's really important. That's why they ask for details like this on, on the application forms. They have no idea who you are. But you might you might know people in Kerry County Council are assessing applications, or they might know of you because they're local. But let's say you're dealing with a civil servant above in a department in Dublin, um, working for a government department, who has no idea one where you live or where your, your, your organization is based, and have no idea about what you do, and no, no idea about who you are. You have to insult them in this section. The strategic context, again, for those who are on the previous workshops on, on grants, this is becoming a, um, it was something that we used previously to get kind of the, an advantage over, over other people applying, where we would put in how the projects we were working on match kind of national policy or local policy. It's now become the norm for every application that you have to show on your application form how your project is, is aligned to either local policy, i.e. local authorities policy and strategies or and or national strategies and policies. Okay. That's where the money's coming from. So the money's being directed towards a fund that is meeting national policy around rural development, rural isolation, marginalization, disadvantaged groups, whatever it might be. It's being ring fenced for a specific project based on specific policy. Your project has to be aligned to that to say, okay, well, what we're doing here is actually helping you fulfill your policy objectives, okay? If you're not aware of what those policies are, you need to download documents like this, or Rural Future, Rural Development Policy, County Development Plan, which is in current in draft format, within in, in County Kerry, County Tourism Strategy, Municipal District Local Area Plans, 
all the recreation plans, if you're doing all the recreation project, and a climate action plan. They're the key ones we would have on file that we dip and dip out of to make sure that the price we're working with for groups align to their 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 uh, the national policy objectives. Okay. Doesn't mean you got to read those policy objectives from cover to cover because they are pretty boring documents. You just basically go in and search for keywords that are relevant to your project. So if you're working on a on a, on a tourism project, like a festival project, it doesn't mean you know, you're not going to go into something about housing in the in the national policy or something about roads infrastructure or wastewater or water policy, nothing to do with you. You're going to look for words like festivals, tourism, um, and you're going to look at what the objectives are in terms of promoting tourism within in rural areas, for example, and you're going to match that. So this is where you, you, you look in, you highlight the key things that are relevant within these documents and use that then in your application form. Like literally stated that our project is helping, is, is in line to policy objective 0055 or something within the county development plan. So you're saying to, if it's Kerry County Council, look, we're doing something here that actually helps you fulfill your objective, gives the money to do it, okay? So that's really, really important, okay? So um, if you take, say, like we're doing a few applications at the moment that are, we're preparing for applications at the moment for the Rural Regeneration Development Fund, the RRDF Fund, so large scale capital projects. And it's very clearly stated on that there, they're going to support capital projects that are looking at um, investing in the reuse and refurbishment of derelict and vacant properties in town centre or village centres in rural areas, in rural towns and villages. Okay. So there's no point to go off saying we're building a brand new building and greenfield site outside the town. Because straight away it goes against their policy. So why would you even think that they would support it? So we would then say, well, you know, we're developing, let's say, an old workhouse into um, a modern multi-purpose um, facility for enterprise, for community use, for whatever, right? And that then adheres or aligns to your policy objectives of reusing and redeveloping and regenerating vacant properties and world towns. So we're saying to them, you said you want to do X, we're doing X for you. Give us 2 million euros to do it. So you're aligned with your policy. Okay, and it's really important. So you have to you have to kind of show how you're aligned. Very, very important. If you're not, you're not going to be, not going to, um, be successful. If they ask you to show how, how you're aligned to it and you don't do it, you don't tell them, you're not going to be, you're not going to be successful. If you lie, um, you're not going to get away with it because you you can't say, oh yeah, we're going to do something here that, that's actually fitting, you know, we adhere to your policies and your, your, your objectives, but you don't state which ones. So they don't show away that you're saying tick in a box or say tick in a box. You've got to get back to them in terms of the, the wording. Very, very important. Um, this example of, 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 again, you know, what we would include in, in an application form, even in our application form, this level of detail won't be, won't be allowed for them because, you know, we first. So we would take um, this sort of information which basically out, outlines what the outcomes of the project would be and how it adheres to various policy objectives. So, for example, this is a, a, a multi, multi-purpose force facility. Um, so we're saying it's going to provide um, uh, to, to support young people that meets national objectives, MPO 28, the sort of regional objectives, RPO. Right? So, again, just basically marking this out. Now, you won't have enough room in, a, in that online application form to put in this table. So, what you do is just basically put in a, in a line saying that the outcomes, one of the outcomes of our project would be to expand facilities for young people in our community. That uh, is in line with the following objectives and just write them out um, you know, national objectives or local authority objectives or whatever it would be. Okay, so you don't have to go into a table format. This is for an actual feasibility study, but you can take this and you can, you know, put it into an application form where you're stating very clearly how your outcomes would support national and local objectives. Again, it is fiercely competitive, the, the application process. Um, there's a lot of money, a lot of people looking for, you know, relatively small funds. So you've always, you can always nearly guarantee that the fund is going to be probably at least 50% oversubscribed. So you're going to have 50% more people look for money than there's actually money there. Um, so you must make sure that you're putting your best foot forward, you're putting your project forward in the best possible way. Um, and by showing how your project helps the funder achieve what they want to achieve, it makes perfect sense. Okay, so again, this is, you know, it takes a bit of time to put this little detail together, but once it's done, it's done, you know, because these objectives won't change for years. They won't change every year, they'll change every five, six years, depending on the life, lifetime of the of the strategy. So the, the new county development plan is being, that's in draft form of the carry, so the carry county development plan, 
it's in 2022 to 2028. So any objective within that isn't going to change anytime soon. So once you've done it once, you, you, you've done it for, for, for a long time. Okay, matching funds is another section that people kind of get caught out on or, or you know, obviously to complete that section because if you don't, they can't apply. Um, you need to understand the, the, the criteria in terms of what they're looking for in terms of matching funds. So for example, if you're applying for leader funding, uh, for capital grants, um, they will provide up to 75% matching funds. Okay. Um, if it's a feasibility grant, up to 90% matching funds. If you're a large scale project and you're applying for RBF funding, which is you know, much, you know large, large projects, um, they will they will fund up to 80% of the project and 5% of the matching funds. So 20% has to come from the community and 5% of that 20% has to be cash. So money sitting on the account, not a loan, not, not money you're going to fundraise, has to be in cash, okay? So just be careful to read the criteria carefully. If there's a requirement to have at least a certain percentage of cash, that means that that cash has to be in the bank at the date that you apply for the funding. You can't put in a note saying, Ash, we be grand, we have, we raised the money before, before we, you know, before the deadline and uh, we'll be okay. And when we get to start the project, we have the money in the account, we promise you. That, that doesn't work. You have to have the money sitting there in the bank statements showing that the money is sitting there, okay? If you're looking at matching funds as a loan, okay, so if you're providing 20% of matching funds going to be loan, um, years ago, you could have a, a, loan, a letter from the bank and they're saying, we, you know, we would have no problem approving a loan for this group. They're a great group, definitely for years. Um, we would look at any loan application very favorably. That day is gone. They now look for the loan to be approved, okay? Um, and that loan has to be approved and stamped and dated by the bank, okay? With the details of the, 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 the amount you're applying, the amount you've been borrowing, the uh, repayment term in terms of years, and the, um, income, the interest rate and the monthly repayments. All has to be provided by the bank, okay? So you can't you know, say, we will have a loan. You have to have the loan at the time of applying. Where in some cases, you might be allowed to put in in-kind contributions. So that might be voluntary labor. Again, there'd be very specific criteria around that in terms of how you calculate the voluntary labor or what you're allowed to put in as voluntary labor and the, the maximum level you can put in. In some cases, they allow, um, some grants will allow you to put in the property value. So let's say you're applying for a grant to um, renovate a building or extend the building um, and you already own the building, you, you, the building's on a site, you can get that building and site valued and that valuation is used as matching funds if it's allowed to uh, towards the towards the, the the matching funds for the grant application. If you're unclear as the as to the matching funding requirements, though you shouldn't be because the criteria normally is very very clear. Um, if you're not too sure, contact them and say, look, we just want to clarify um, what matching funds are required. Okay, you just have you know make make sure that you're 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 putting in the correct information in there. Some groups just don't have matching funds in place at the time of applying, so therefore they're not eligible to apply. Okay, but you need it's very important that you have the matching funds prove that your matching funds there. They normally look for maybe three months bank statements. Um, they look for loan approval uh, from Cancredo, King's Finance Ireland, Bank of Ireland, Commercial Banks, whatever it might be. Uh, but that loan approval has to be in place. Again, back to our, 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 our being ready and having the file in place. Some people can't find their bloody bank statements on the day of the deadline, or they can't find the loan approval from the bank. And there's you no, know, they're if you're in the bank and ask for a loan approval that you already got, we sent out to you, it'll probably take you a week, if not more, because that's to go to Dublin and let's go back and forth and have to email 14 different people to get it. The days of like going into your local branch and getting documentation off the bank is long gone. So, you know, if you don't have these things in place, you're not going to have them in time for, for a deadline. So, have them in place, have them stored and filed somewhere where you know where they are. Okay. Um, Measuring impact, again, um, this is something that comes up a lot with, with groups in terms of what does that actually even mean. So again, I'll just put in some, some word in there. I'm not going to go through detail now because it'll be on the slides anyway. But really with, with impact, it's important that you're showing the impact of your project um, to the person who's assessing the application. Okay. So and you need to kind of, in some cases, and you know, for want of a better word, you can over-egg that. You need to kind of exaggerating slightly. 
So, you know, when you're talking about numbers of people benefiting from a project, you also include the number of people that have benefited indirectly from the project. So, for example, if you're working on this sort of project, which this example here is what I've done, is that you might have some 30 young people involved, okay, but those young people are being looked after or they're, they're living with their parents and siblings, they might have carers, they might have other service providers that are, that, are, that, are, that are working with them. They're all benefiting indirectly from the work you're doing with them, okay? So if you're providing respite care, for example, it benefits the actual person that's getting the care, but it's also benefiting the carers. So one person might be benefiting in terms of the person receiving the care, but you might have two you know, family members that are doing the caring, they know are benefiting also, and those three people benefiting from that. So again, you're looking at how can I extrapolate this out? Um, how can I look at the people that are being indirectly supported by, by this project as well? So if we're working on a, on a, on a project for say a sports club, that are doing, say, you know, pitches or dress rooms, or whatever, they would say the number of people benefiting there or every member of the club will benefit from this. Okay. But they also might have um given access to the school during the day. So local national school. And they might they might go to national school and say, how many kids are paying PE every week? And I might say, well, we've got 300 kids in our school, and each kid pays PE, so that's 300 children every week that are benefiting from this pitch that we're developing. Then you might go to local disability organization, how many people have you got that you're going to be doing your physical activity programs with, we can give you our pitch for every Friday morning from 11 to 1, and how many, uh, 25 people benefit there. And now you've got to a situation where not just using, look at the members of the club benefiting, but you know that the entire community benefiting from the project. Let's say you put a walking track around the project, and you want that to say, you know, um, um, you know, put five lights on and people can walk around there at nighttime where it's safe to walk around. And let's say you estimate that 500 people a week will walk around the track, you know, every week. Okay, not the same time, obviously, but you know, throughout the week. That's 500 people in the community. Now we've got a project that's going to benefit thousands of people as opposed to just members of the club. That's what I'm talking about impact. That's got a serious impact at a local level. So think, think a bit bigger than just what you're doing and how that's going to benefit the people that are, that, are, that, are, that are benefiting directly. I think about all the other people can benefit from this as well in terms of the project that you're doing. Okay, bring your schools in, bring your other organizations in, bring your other clubs in. Um, when you're looking at projects as well, because that will help you show this greater impact for the work we do. Okay. So again, you're looking at um, how do we measure that? So, you know, again, down here, I've done like, you know, we've we a robust evaluation and performance measuring tools, right? So we do surveys, we do, you know, we get feedback from the clients, we get feedback from their parents, feedback from their siblings, feedback from the organization that they're working with. And we take this feedback in and we look at the impact of the work we do. If it needs to be changed, we change it. If it needs to be addressed, we address it. If it needs to be expanded, we expand it. So we're showing how we measure the impact and then what we do with the, we do with those measurements afterwards. Okay. Again, you might think that's an awful lot of work, an awful lot of detail, but you, you're, you're showing them that you're thinking about how their money, which they're giving to you, is going to impact and has got more value for them giving it to you than giving it to someone else. Okay. It's all about adding value, adding value, adding value, right? So you can show projects where you can collaborate with other people, you can partner with other people. There's multi-use of what you're doing, a multi-purpose, uh, and there's huge impact. That's going to, they will look at, well, there's 10 people benefiting from this thousand euros over here, but there's 100 people benefiting from this thousand euros over here. Of course, you want to give it to the one that's benefiting from other people, because it's value for money. Now, value for money, I don't like that term, because it's about numbers, less than more, more so than quality, but that's what, 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 People that are assessing applications think of where is my grant going to get the most impact and most value. That's the way to look at it. So again, show what the impact is. Okay, wording to some people again with things like questions with which ask or applications which ask questions like, will the project proceed without funding? Okay, you don't have three three answers here. You got no, it won't start without funding, or you might say in a limited capacity, or yes, it would start without funding. Okay, I would never say. That the project won't start without funding. Because basically, what you're saying there is you're trying to say, you're kind of blackmailing them. Say, okay, if you don't give us the money, we're not starting it. Then we're not going to do this if you don't give us the money. If I'm the person assessing the application, I'm thinking, okay, so don't give up. So they're not big protests, this great need they have in their community for this project. But if you don't get this grant, they're not going to start it or they're not going to do anything with it. That to me is kind of some of you all saying that they're basically kind of doing us an ultimatum here, either fund it or we don't start it. I'm not going to say yes either, because if I say yes, they'll say, well, if they got the money to start this, why look at the money off us? You know, there's a group over here that could do with the money that they, they've got half of ready, but they need the other half. So we'll go with them because this group here said yes, they can do without funding. So we're going to give it to the other group instead. 
So what we always use is it's going to happen in a limited capacity, right? So this is kind of typical standard wording I use. Um, so I would say we have demonstrated that there is an immediate identified need for the project. Without full funding, this project can only be developed on a phased basis at a greatly reduced number of people participating. The only option to proceed at the required scale without funding is to secure a loan. The repayment server would put our existing sustainable annual budgets at risk. Okay. So really what you're saying to them is that absolutely we need this funding, but we're willing to start it on a reduced level just to get it off the ground because we need to do that at a community level here. Okay, but it's going to be at a reduced level. We're going to do it in phases. So what we've done in one year might take five years, but bloody hell, we're going to do it anyway. So you're showing them that you're passionate about what you're going to do and you're going to drive on with it, even though you can't get the full funding at that stage, right? So in summary, we're committed to this project and meeting the needs of our young people and our community, but with the funding and support of what our grant is, we could do so much more and a much more wider impact and make a real difference to the lives of, young, of one of the young people. That's an example of what we use in the application world. So you're saying to them, help us achieve more, right? If you say no, you're telling them that you're giving up straight away. So yes, you're giving an out. So go with them with capacity. You can use kind of version of those words if you want. Um, but again, so you're making the argument for, for the project, but you're showing not going to give up on the project either. Um, displacement, again, um, is usually asked where that basically means that is this project being done by someone else? Um, is this project being funded by another source or could this project be funded by another source? Again, normally people would say, you know, things like, uh, no, it's not causing displacement um, and even the dash, <laughs> no one could elaborate on it. Um, again, what we would do is use this opportunity to sell again, sell, sell, sell. And we would say, basically look that we're engaging with our community, right? We're, we're collaborating, we're working in partnership, we're doing joint initiatives with our community. So instead of our project actually displacing another project, our projects will add value and complement existing projects locally, okay? They're key things because you're not, you're not saying that we're gonna cause displacement, we're actually adding value and we're complementing existing. So the money that's been provided to this fund is going to add so much more to the local community, not the space what's happening already. Okay. If your project is going to cause this placement, if you're looking for funding for something that's already already been done, um, I would question again why are you going to do it? You know, why are you looking at funding something that's already done by someone else? Um, so again, you know, use the words like not the spacing, we're complementing, we're collaborating, we're working in partnership with a joint project. This sort of words is, is really, really important. So basically, before we move on to the application, the practical application form, every grant that you do, right, is, is a sales pitch. You're literally selling your organization to the funder. You're just like a, a salesperson selling a car. They want your money for that car, okay? You've got to give them all the reasons to say yes to your application and give them no reason to say no, all right? A lot of organizations, they give reasons to say no because they don't do the application properly, they don't fill in all the sections, they don't put out, they provide the documentation. They might fill in all the sections and they might have all the documentation, but the sections don't really get the message across. It doesn't really sell the organization to, or the project to the person reading it, and therefore they say no, okay? So you need to understand the person you're pitching to. So you're not gonna know the person who's gonna be assessing the application, but you do know the organization because they give you a list of criteria they give a list of terms and conditions, and they give, they give, they've outlined what their aims of that project and that grant is, okay? So if you're like, well, I've no idea what they have support there, that means you haven't read the criteria. Very rarely would you look at an application form and look at the criteria and be confused at the end of it, thinking I'm not too sure what they're gonna support here. If you're not too sure, contact them and say, look, this is what we're doing. Is that, does this meet your requirements? Are we doing something that you can support? Have you supported other projects like this before? You know, ask them those questions to make sure that your project is actually relevant to them. If it's not, then it's a waste of time. So what is relevant to them? If they say we're going to, we're this grant will support vulnerable young people in the community and you're working with older people in the community, your project is relevant to them, okay? You need to make sure that what, what they want to achieve with the grant is something that you're going to achieve with your money that you get out of, okay? How does your project benefit their aims? Okay, so again, it's like say, if in the tourism strategy, there is an objective there to promote and develop um, marine activity on coastal, in coastal areas, we're living on a coastal area in Count Ferry, we can develop lots of marine activities and your project is a local project, say developing a blue way, for example, 
you can say that our project, which is aims to develop a blue way, um, of course, the blue way up the Rapinster or Dingle Peninsula or North Kerry or wherever it might be, that that's meeting your overall aims at national level to promote and develop water based activity in marine tourism in coastal areas. They want to develop it, you're developing for them. Um, are there features of your project meeting their criteria aims? So, the, again, they be very specific in terms of what they will support and you make sure that the, your project comes to features, what you're actually doing within your project meets, meets, meets their aims. Okay. Um, does your project represent value for money? If they feel it isn't, and does it represent value for money, they're not going to support it. So sometimes, uh, for example, you might be applying for a grant, let's say for 5,000 euros, but your overall project costs are 100,000 euros. That's not value for money from the point of view of the funder because you need 95,000 euros more to get the project off the ground. You might get that money, so therefore the five grand they will give you is, is kind of a waste of time. If say a group comes in and says, okay, we need 10,000 euros to get this project off the ground and we're applying for five, that's value for money because they only need 5,000 euros more to get it started, okay? On the other side, if you're looking for, you know, 50,000 euros and the maximum grant is 10,000 euros, then there's no point to find that either. So again, look in terms of what do they see as value for money in terms of giving the money over. Um, value for money again goes back to the amount of people benefiting from it and the amount of added value you can add to it. So, this project will, once it's done, will add, you know, will allow us to do so much more and have so much more indirect benefits in terms of facilities or services, whatever it might be, okay? So for example, let's say you're, you're applying for funding for a coordinator for a pilot project. And that funding is for three years, that's it. And then in three years, you're showing this value for money because within that three year period, that coordinator is going to build a revenue model that's going to allow that project to be sustained long-term. So that you're saying to them is that the money you're giving us now is actually an investment to let us develop more and more and more and more. And we need this money to get things started. Okay. That's from, from where, I'm, where I'm looking at things like say value for money. So if we're doing an application for a building project, let's say a community enterprise center, and they're looking at say 2 million euros of funding to, to, to build it, we're saying, okay, well, the 2 million euros that you're giving us now to build this building of exchequer money, taxpayers' money, we, that this project will lead to you know 100 jobs within the first two years. Those 100 jobs will generate you know five million euros worth of salaries every year, um, which in turn will be local spend at local level within the local town, and will be taxes back to and payroll taxes. So the two million euro investment now you will see multiple of that coming back into the economy and into the sector over 10 year in 10 year period. That's value for money. Okay, to see return on investment. So you've got to show how your project isn't. The, a cost to them, it's actually an investment, okay? So for example, if you're applying for the community support fund and you're you're investing in say, you know, refurbishing works to your to your building, such as LED lighting, for example, or better insulation or whatever it might be, that's gonna save you money over the next five years. So it's actually an investment in your property, not a cost. Some money is going to just going on the toilet, it's gonna to be money that's gonna be used to improve and enhance the property and save you money long term. Okay. Is the impact of the project Easy demonstration and measure. It should be. Like you should be able to count the number of people that are supported, number of people that are benefiting, just by asking them how it's improved their lives. You know, you can you can tell the impact. So for example, we were doing more transport initiative um, evaluations years ago for Roar Bus and Kerry Flyer and Local Link and the rest of them. Um, we'd ask the number, ask about you know how many people were on the bus. But then we'd ask the people on the bus, how is this impact on your lives? What differences make your lives mid socially, you know, from mental health point of view, whatever. And it was like, why do only five people on the bus? But the impact that they that had in their lives was the, the what you projected in terms of your evaluation. That was what you focused on. You know, we were saving, you know, they were saving people's lives, there were there were there were great opportunities for people to to meet people, there were great opportunities to go into the local village, all these things like you look at the economic impacts, all these sort of impacts. I mean, measure them um, and we kind of highlight them. So show how your project can be can be easily measured and how you can show the impact. And then finally, do they trust you? That's key. So like, if, if, if I win the lotto and, you know, um, I set myself a, a fund for a million euros, I think the other 19 million euros, um, I'd be asking questions, right? Okay, I've always been looking for money off me. Who do I trust? Who do I trust going to spend this money correctly? And more, more importantly, who's going to come back to me with, you know, the right reports, the right administration, the right drawdown documents, but that's what it's not, they're not going to be a pain that to deal with that are going to, you know, be combating with, you know, reports not completed correctly and all this kind of stuff. 
So they need to trust you. And that's why if you've got a good track record or you've got experience in managing public funds, tell them the experience managing public funds that you're a good organization to work with after the grant has been approved. That you have no problem getting an application or to draw down files into them, you report back to them, everything will be back on time, and you'll be the, the perfect person to deal with or organization to deal with when it comes to administration. Really important. So there are the key things that we would focus on when we're trying to sell the application to the person with the money. Okay, and that's why I use the word sell because that's what you're doing, you're selling for along with other maybe other tools and organizations trying to sell the same thing. Okay, so now I'm just going to go into before we move on to the application forms, the, the questions. Um, I'm chatting to the questions here. Um, okay, so Google Drive. Okay, yeah, Google Drive is free. Um, yes, yeah, you can pick whichever one of those in there. One Drive, there's Google Drive, there's Dropbox. Um, okay. Uh, any of February sets is basically things fine. Okay, if there's no questions of the link. No? Okay. Has anyone any questions before we move on to the application form? If you might just some use and ask me, because there's some here, I can't see all the hands are up. <laughs> just let up. Um, okay, so this question, sorry. Um, so is it possible to lease existing applications and reapply? Um, no, if, you, if you're doing an application form on a portal, okay, so the question is, sorry, is, can, you, can you delete the application form and then reapply again? If once it's submitted, it's submitted, it's gone, right? So what we normally would do is, is we, would, we would keep the application open on the portal kind of go in and go back in and out of it, um, have it ready, and then kind of like maybe the day before, um, if you obviously do it long before the day before, but maybe the day before, um, again, review the application and make sure that everything is okay and everything's right, and then submit the application, okay? Because at that point, you know, you, you might have a situation where you submit the application maybe a week before the deadline, and then realize I forgot to put something in, or I didn't submit this document, or something's changed, or I got a better quotation, for example, um, and you might want to go back and get it again. You can't really go back in and, and, and get it and get it back out again. So you normally leave it to maybe the day before. So you have everything in place and there's no real change to make afterwards um, to, to before you submit it. Um, can the funding body not delete the application before the deadline? Um, I don't know. That's something you need to ask. If it's, if it's a, the funding body, whether it be county council or government departments, um, so if you're, your questionnaire is, I'm presuming that if you have done something wrong and you've submitted the application, can you go in then and ask them, look, that application you deleted and allow me to reapply? Um, the answer so is I don't know. I would presume they can't, um, but that I'm just presuming that. I, that would need to be checked out. I can, I can make an inquiry for you, but it just would seem, again, um, not to any experience why that. I've, I've no experience with someone bringing up or contacting the department or, or a government department or a local target saying, can we you know, take them out? But just check, yeah, check with the council for the best thing to do, check with whatever department is you're applying for too. Um, how can you keep a record of a complete online court application? How can you get a copy of that application form? Yeah, so that's that's a very question there in terms of, Joan asked that question. And that's the point to made around Joan in terms of, if you're doing the application form online and you go section to section, some people, what they do is they take a screenshot of the, the application form on the screen, okay? That works okay where in some portals, um, you can see the entire section, let's say, completed. But in other portals, you've got to, go, to scroll down um, to see the other parts, so you can't screenshot, okay? And that causes problems. Um, so what we tend to do, some, some, some portals, they allow you to print the application form as PDF. But in some ports, very low, you do that. Again, it doesn't, it only actually acts as a screenshot. It doesn't actually allow you to, to complete there to print the entire application form. Other portals do. It allows you to print off the entire application form. It does kind of for, for you as such. So what I would do is, again, I would cut and paste. Um, I would do the application form in Word and have all the information I supplied onto the application form. I would keep that in a Word format. So that's where your, that's your record really um, of the application form. Uh, but it is, good, it is a good point to make because I'll keep the screenshot. And then the rise that only half the section is shown on the screen. And that's no good then because the application is gone and they, they don't have access to it anymore. Um, in some cases, like the um, sports capital funding, you can go back in and you can review, even after it's submitted, you can review that. You can't edit it, but you can review it after it's submitted. So you can go back in anytime and you can, uh, you can, you can go back in. 
uh, travel for you know, okay. Um, just the question to have it for when you have to have it, your paper. Okay, so I'm not too sure what the question is there, John, in terms of the completion of the paperwork. Um, so, sorry, I'm uh, sorry to uh, say it, to make it clear. It's like, you know, when you apply for funding, you get the funding and a year later you have to prove you did what you did and all the rest of it. That's what I mean by completion. Yeah. So like normally you pull out your, your PDF that you've saved or whatever, but if it's an online form, um, I'm just thinking, well, it's something to ask the funding people anyway, that even if, if they go for these online, that they have some facility for people to have a Word document, because yeah. otherwise they're putting a lot of work on people to have to cut yeah. and paste yeah. questions and then... Yeah, teams, on some day they do log it in so you can print, uh, print the same version of it, um, and print the, so you can print it off as, and it prints off as PDF. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of them do that now. Um, if, if they don't have that, though, that's what I'm saying about using the Word document, because <clears throat> this allows you to. But also, with the Word document, as well, um, John, is that the reason why keeping the Word document is that you can cut and paste it afterwards for other applications as well. So, if it's a PDF document you printed from the system, you can't edit that PDF, so you've got to type it all back out again. <laughs> I just find it so very lazier, but if you're doing a lot of applications, it, kind of, it, does, it does speed up the process for you, because it literally is cut and paste for a lot of them, you know. Um, so that's why you do it in Word, it's a lot, lot easier down the line. Um, okay, so is there are questions there, everyone okay to move on? Great, perfect. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna stop this share. I'm gonna share the the the, the consoles. Um, I just, uh, I'm ready here to go, yeah. Okay, can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the, so that's basically, if you go to Kerry Con Council's website, kerrycoco.ie, on their homepage, they have um, the, the, the links to the, the, the two funds, Community Activities Fund and the Community Sports Fund, okay? So, um, as I said around, both, both deadlines are on the 28th of February. So, I've just prepared this one earlier because it saves time going through it in detail um, in, the, in the workshop. So, the first thing is what you, you would do is you go into um, the, the guidelines, right? So, terms and conditions. Okay, that brings up your PDF document here. Um, oh, the guidance is going to slow now because everything's opened up. Okay, so can you see that? Terms and conditions? Yes. Yeah. So your terms so basically again very clearly states what what they what what they want to see on the application form. There's the, the, the deadline, right? Um, if you go back into the in here, so we've got your, your guidelines. Okay, so again, very, you know, spells all clearly um, the funds, um, what the fund will support, who is eligible to, support, to, to apply, what projects are eligible for funding, and what costs are eligible for funding. So again, very clearly states here what they will, what they will fund um, with, the with, with the funding. If, so if you've got something that you want to do and it's not included here, I would simply just email them and say, look, you know, we, we're looking at doing the following. Um, I don't see it on the list on your on your on your criteria. Is that something that you will support? Okay, just get, get confirmation from them. Typically, and it's not just for care account counts, it's for any department. Do that by email. So there's a there's a paper trail there. You know, someone giving you the okay over the phone it is of no use later on if you get turned on because it was not eligible. You can't say, oh, I was talking to Mary there six months ago and she said it was fine. You need to have you know proof that that, that was told to you. Um, but again, you know, they might say, they might say, look, it's, these are any samples of funds. You know, again, they, or they might say, no, that's all you can apply for. Um, but again, with this funding, um, it is it is open for for um, like overhead costs um, and fees and and, and utility bills and average, which is unusual for 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 grant aid. So it's again, it's a good opportunity. But again, if you're not too sure, um, make sure you ask them. Okay. Um, again, it very clearly says what's not eligible for funding. So if you put in say for salary costs, you know, it's not point because it's not, it's not eligible. Um, the requirements of the program in, like the tax requirements, your insurance, you know, acknowledgement funding, all these things. And so if you if you don't have a tax clearance insert or a tax access number, you know, straight away you're going to be problems. If you don't have proper insurance in place, um, that's adequate insurance in place, again, um, you're going to, you're going to have problems in the later stage as well. So it's going to be about being organized and everything in place at some you apply for the grant. 
that you had to go through the selection criteria um, and everything else. I'm not going to go through that in detail, but in show you in terms of the level of detail that's provided with every grant, um, there's no reason why you're, you should be in the dark in terms of what's been sought or what's been looked for. Um, make it very, very clear in terms of what, what they're looking to see, what you have to have in place. Um, so just going into the application form then. And so that this completed already. Um, I just basically looked like kind of a, a, um, a dummy application here, um, a made up application just to, to complete it. Um, so then you go on to the, 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 the part here. So this is next. And you put in the name of the applicant group. So I made up this HQ Community Central Limited or CLG. So company limited by guarantee. The address, um, which is our own business address, our air code. Um, Brief description of the organization. So you can see here the word count. So you've got AC words left. So I could add in another, you know, um, the words of characters. Sorry, characters. So I could add another character, another 80 characters here. So I could do another probably maybe two lines if I wanted to. But it's very clear that so it's like, you know, it's not a profit organization, established 1999, aimed by a multi purpose facility for people living in, in a visitor community. Central is governed by a voluntary board and company has two full time staff. C scheme workers in a panel of 20 volunteers. Uh, we have three committees, which meet monthly. The facilities provide into meeting rooms, office space, uh, 30 by 20 meter hall, small kitchen, gym, fitness studio. Facilities operate Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 10 p.m. to 6 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So in that paragraph, I'm pretty much telling them everything they need to know about the organization, what we do. Okay. I'm not going into great detail in any part of it because I've only literally had, I mean, it's 500 characters or something. Um, and if I just if I go over, let's say, I'm just going to cut and paste this. Let's say I go over the number of characters. Um, okay, straight away it tells me I've gone over, right? So there's a word count or character count on this, so I can't go over that, okay? Um, but if I'm on my Word documents, I'll already know that anyway because I've already checked the character count on the Word documents. Does that, does that make sense? So that's why it's easier to edit these on, on Word because you can go back in. Plus, for example, if I put in, uh, if I spell this incorrectly, um, like this here, just cut this off for a second, just to make prove another point. So, um, so if I spell, I'm trying to do more spell. So if I, if I spell, right, so multi-purpose there, spell P-U-R-P-O-S. Okay, so I, I've spelled it incorrectly, but there's nothing telling me I spelled it incorrectly. There's no word check on it or spelling check on it. Um, if I do that in Word, I know that's spelled incorrectly. Okay, so again, if you're rushing an application, you know, very often they are, um, your spelling can be all over the place with it. Okay, is that a big deal when you're applying for grants? Absolutely, because I think mean, this person spent no time uh, in reviewing this or didn't even bother, you know, giving them a spell check on it. But it doesn't have it. Some, some um, portals do have spell checks, but this one doesn't. Okay, small thing, but again, that's why we, 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 we use words to, to edit it. You're established. 999. Um, is your group registered with Carry PPN? Yes, if it's not, you need to be registered with Carry PPN. Um, what is the purpose of the organization? So, again, to provide a multi purpose facility um, you know, for older people, young people, people with disabilities, we provide a range of sports. Again, I'm just making this up. But you can see there like, the, the, the amount of characters that you're, you're um, allowed is 253 characters. That's not a lot of characters to. Go, you know, to provide, you know, giving an outline of what your purpose is as an organization. So again, goes back to your editing skills that you put in the, the, the detailed, not detail, but you're, you're focusing on the key points that they want to see. So your purpose should, of your organization should reflect the purpose of the grant, right? So if, there, if, you're, if the grant is for, and all that, this is not specific for the, 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 the fitness fund, let's say you're applying for a grant and the purpose of the grant is to support young people. Your purpose of your group then should clearly state that we're supporting young people. If it's people with disabilities, we're supporting people with disabilities. If it's unemployed, we're supporting people that are unemployed. So again, that's why it's important to read the criteria. You're making sure that, that your purpose matches their purpose, okay? But you have a huge amount of space to do this. Um, have you received any funds from any other grant schemes? Do you remember earlier in the presentation, I said to keep a record of all your grants? No. The reason I click no here is because it's easier for me to do it. If I click yes, I can give all the details. The name of the scheme, the funding organization, the amount received, the year received. Not a big deal if you kept record of it. A massive deal if you have no idea what the scheme was, how much you got, when you got it. Okay, now you gotta go back to your bank statements, now you gotta start making phone calls, now you gotta start annoying people to get information that you already should have kept. So 
every time you get a grant, you put it down somewhere, the name, the funding organization, what we see, the year we see, <clears throat> because every grant is going to ask for it. Let's say you got, say, four or five grants in the last, what, two or three years, and you probably would have gotten a lot of grants in the last two years because of all the COVID grants, and you're going to have to put in more. So you put in, you take plus, and you plus, and you base adding all the grants you received. Very easy if you have kept records of it, very difficult if you haven't, okay? Um, let's say you take no because you could be bothered filling out that, that section, right? Even though you know that you got funding. And let's say you apply to Caricom Council. And Caricom Council go back to their records and they notice that you got funding previously under the CSF fund or from a leader grant, whatever it might be. Now you lie to them on your, on your application, okay? So some people just say it's an easier life to stick no and say nothing, but you're, you're on the risk then of, 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 of not completing the, the document um, or the application form uh, correctly. So again, pick yes and put in whatever grants you receive. I pick no because I'll fill in all that information and go to the next section, which I'm not doing. Um, do, you, do you receive funding from any other organization? Um, more than likely you do in some case. So again, give details below. So let's say you're a family resource center and you're getting funding from TUSA, or let's say you're a community services program and you're getting funding from public, or let's say you're a, um, a disability organization, you're getting funding through HSC section 39. Again, you have to put in the funding there in terms of the funding organization, amount received, and the um, year received. Okay, so again, no. Uh, <clears throat> how does your organization link with other organizations in your area? So again, put in there like you're collaborating with other organizations, you're working in a partnership with them, you're, you, you consult with, or with um, other organizations that are doing similar work to you. So let's say, for example, you're again a sports organization, you're working with the local schools, work with other clubs, working with disability organizations, work with all the people services, active retired groups, providing facilities, all the sort of work you're doing. So how you're linking in with those organizations. You might be, you might be or you should be registered with Kerry PPN. So how are you linking into Kerry PPN? Are you linking in with any other organization like stakeholders, so Kerry County Council, government departments, you know, fill, fill, that, fill as much information you can in there in that section in terms of the organization. Charitable status number, you should have them five. Okay, so your charitable status number is, there's two charter numbers. One is your CHY number for revenue. So you have a the CHY in front of it. And the other one is your 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 um your registration number uh with the charities regulator. Okay, so if you're registered with the charities regulator, you have a charity reg charity regulator number, and you're registered with charity revenue, you have the CHY number. Okay, the two separate numbers. Your tax reference number is going to be your if your company, your company number. Um so that would be, if you don't have that, it would be on your, on your um, tax clearance cert or your, on your, um, your, your account will have that detail for you anyway. You more likely be registered with, my, with, um, with Ross for revenue purposes, revenue online services. Again, you'd have that tax reference number um, on there. Your tax clearance access number. Again, if you can't get it, your accountant will be able to get it on Ross. Uh, but again, you should have those, those numbers on file somewhere. Um, and that, that's important that you put in the right tax access number because again, people put in their tax reference number instead of access number. And again, it's not the, it's not the same thing um, because that's the number that's checked to see if you're tax compliant. So you must make sure it's correct. Um, if you've got website and social media accounts, put in the links there. So your links to your social media, your Facebook, your Instagram, your Twitter, your LinkedIn, your TikTok, whatever you're on, put it down there as a link and also your website will be the link. If you don't have any social media accounts or website, It'd be unusual, but if you if you don't just leave a blank, say not applicable. Um, but again, again, I again not really relevant to tonight's workshop, but again, I would encourage you to have a website and I would encourage you to have some social media platforms, but a website more importantly, because now the funder can go to your website and get some more background information that you might be able to put into the application form. So you might be able to provide supplementary, supplementary, supplementary information. Information about your funding, your fundraising, what you do, what service you provide, testimonials, all that kind of stuff. So you can show you can show how good you are, and um, so they can go to that website and see see that information. The information you can put on the application form. Um, then you click next. Now again, sorry, if you go back here, if I don't complete, let's say one of these sections, it doesn't allow me go forward. So if I try to go forward here, okay, and say that your survey contains errors. So I I get to place blank. That's a good thing because in, in the old application forms, 
if you're rushing through an application, you might actually miss a section. You might actually forget to put in a tax number or a company number or airport or something like that. And nothing's stopping you from going ahead. And you submit the application and then, you know, the application is incomplete because you just have to oversee one section or one line that you're supposed to complete, you didn't complete. The great thing about the online applications is that um, it law oh, you don't want to be virtuous. Sorry, two seconds. This one thing that is 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 very good about this application form. If you actually put in a proper airport, it doesn't allow you to progress. So I was going to remember that an airport here. Um, okay. So again, if you put in the, uh, a kind of a, a dummy number there, like zero 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 or something, it won't allow you to progress. So that's the one thing good about online application form. It does stop you from making mistakes or not um, completing application form in detail. Um, so contact details. Again, what I mentioned that they are on, make sure the person you're putting down as a contact person is the contact person. Some groups have a habit of nominating someone that wasn't at the meeting to be the contact person, right? And saying, Asher, look, uh, Tom isn't here, but I know Tom will do it anyway, so Tom's name though. If I'm going to be that uh, contact person, absolutely put my name down as contact person, but I need to know my own contact person. Um, if, on the other hand, sorry, if you're, if you're, if you're getting a consultant to do application forms for you, I mean, you don't really need to in a lot of cases, they're pretty straightforward, a lot of them. But if you are, the consultant isn't a contact person, they're nowhere near the application form. So people put down, you know, the, their, their accountant, for example, is a contact. It's got to be someone within the organization, okay? So the role of the, the person in the group, I'm putting on PRO, uh, my telephone number, my email address, the alternative contact person name is the the kind of the the, 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 the second person which you down. Again, their name, what role they are in the organization, their their contact number. Make sure the numbers are correct. Make sure the emails are correct. And as I said earlier, make sure the emails are checked regularly as well. That not just kind of emails are never used or never never looked at. Um, and again, as I said, make sure they're not company emails. And that might be because that pay or the, the correspondence might be stopped by firewall within within the company. So again, use your own personal email. Um, and probably anyway, if you're volunteering, you shouldn't be using your own your employer's email address. Um, because you're not supposed to be doing your volunteer work during your 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 your, your day job, salaried work, or um, in theory. Um, okay, so move on to next. So this the uh, with the communities uh, activities fund. Um, you have to pick what district you're in. No, you should know what district you're in. <laughs> if you're strong as what district you're in, you are in trouble. Um, so again, you know, truly in my case, um, so which funding category? So in, in the Bitcoin activities fund, there's two funding categories. So we've got small, small scale grants with all insurers or less. That'd be things like maybe something towards insurance or utility costs, and then grants in excess of a thousand euros. Does your um, project in develop, involve development of property? I think no. If you click yes, um, this is um, important because are all relevant permissions in place, right? So for example, let's say you're you're, and this came up as a, a an issue um, recently, but but another project we're doing one in County Leash, where there's there's question marks over actually who owns the property. There's no formal lease in place um, with the with the community group that are actually operating on the property, and no one actually knows who owns the property. They believe it's held in trust by the parish, but then there's 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 rumors locally that's owned by a local person that owns the building. Um, so they don't have any rewritten kind of consent from anyone uh, for access to the building, which now is causing major problems when they're applying for grants. So again, um, are all revenue permissions in place, kind of permission written consent from the owner or landowner. Um, again, if you could guess, um, you gotta make sure that you, you can provide that when it's sought, okay? So I'm presum presum just, you know, saying here it's not involving property, so that's good on that. So under which heading will the funding be used for? So again, um, you, I'm putting in here is construction works. Sorry, that's, so adaptation to building, say, for example, or energy upgrades. So you can take as many as you want here, really. Um, so adaptation from facilities. So again, take what's relevant to you. And again, if there's some, if there's kind of multi-purpose kind of um, project or if it kind of overlaps through them, again, you can put it, you can put in that and you can take as many as you want. Um, obviously, you take those boxes, it's going to, you know, it's not going to add really any value to your application because I think, okay, this person's doing, is applying for in here. And they haven't concentrated on any one thing. Plus, also, if you put in a lot of, if you take a lot of these boxes, you have to provide quotations for all of them. Okay. So again, keep it, you know, I would recommend maybe focus on one thing. Um, and then just, you know, and, and have you know, your quotations for that one thing. Okay. 
Um, so I was going to pick, um, just put in here, adaptation to community facility. Okay. Um, what is the purpose of the grant? So again, you've got a certain number of characters here. So again, I'm just made up a, a, an example here that if we were doing this, we'd be doing a sensory garden outside our community center. Um, and again, you know, we've basically that the grants can be used to support the development of the sensory garden, biodiversity awareness, demonstration space at the rear of our center. Um, a sensory garden is a garden, you know, it's basically kind of just giving an overview of what the project is about and explaining a bit more detail about the project, okay? So I put it very, very clear in terms of the funding will be used to A, get a design planting plan prepared and B, match fund the infrastructure costs. So make it clear in your, in, in your application form what you're actually applying for. A lot of people when they're, when they're submitting grant applications, which I don't think this makes any sense, but it, it, it does make any sense, but a lot of people do it or don't do it. They don't actually state very clearly what the money's going to be used for, right? It's too vague, right? So, you know, very clear there, this, this like, you know, two sentences, the funding will be used for A, to get a design and planting plan, and B, match funds the infrastructure costs. The site of where the center has been here to allow for the space to be developed. So we're showing that we're very clear about what we're going to do with the money, we know that in our head, but the person who's reading the application has no idea what we're doing, so we've got to spell it out for them. Okay. So be very clear in terms of what you're asking for and what you're going to use the money for. Okay. Because sometimes if it's, if it's too vague, they're, they're not really too sure what, what the money is going to use for, and they can't really see the value of it because it's not, we're not really spelling it out for them. So, as I said earlier, um, a lot of the application forms online now, you, you can actually mark where you're located on a, on, a, on a map on Google Maps or whatever map system this is. Again, it gives you latitude and longitude. You might ask why that's important. Um, in some cases, I'm you know, presuming the relevance of this is that it shows where the project is located in terms of what Mr. District is located in. But in some in some projects, like say sports capital funding, for example, um, it, it will determine if you're in a core area or a greater area. Okay, so if you're in a greater area, the core area, by giving the location, they know from the, the, the location of the project if it's actually in one of those areas. Okay. So that's what they use it for. Um, when will your project begin? This is something that is important as well um, because you've got to be realistic in terms of when the project's going to start and when it's going to finish and what you're going to use the money for, right? So let's say you're, you're doing a um, um, piece of work that, re that requires building works, right? And you're applying for this grant, which is on February 28th. And let's say you, you say that all the projects are going to start on the 1st of March. It's not going to start on the 1st of March because you only submitted the application the day before the 1st of March. And it's not going to be approved maybe until the end of March or April. And you've got to go through all the, the process of being approved and being, you know, get, getting formal approval before you can start works, right? So let's say you're applying for a grant for, you know, infrastructure works. And you're thinking, okay, if I apply for the grant in 28 of February, and if I'm successful, let's say they're assessing the application whatever, February, March, whatever it's going to be. Let's say we're going to anticipate we get approval on um, in early March. And we've got trades people lined up and they can start pretty much straight away from the go ahead. We'll start the project by the end of March, okay? Um, and let's say we've talked to the trades people, this is going to take roughly two months to get the project completed. Then we put in the end of May as being the, the deadline for the project to complete it. Okay, so be realistic about it, okay? Um, if you're not too sure, now this 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 application asks you to put in, you get you get you to pick a date. If you've no idea when it's going to start, in terms of the actual date, give a rough rough estimate of the date. In some applications, we would put in the application or the application. The project will start, um, you know, um, two months or one month after grant approval. Okay, so we put in this kind of a, a, a phrase like that, but we don't have to give an actual date. And then we'll say, and the project will expect to last three months or four months from the date of start date. Okay. In this case, look for actual dates, so put in actual dates. They're not going to, like, no one from Kerry County Council is going to arrive over to your office or door and say, You said on the application form we were starting on the 30th of March, and you didn't. That's This is this guidelines for the purposes of, of, of how long the project will take complete. So let's say you want to say the project will start on the 30th of March, but it's going to take you know, a year and a half to complete. Then it's not really much good in terms of a fund because the money's not going to be spent before the end of the year. Okay, so again, it's something from the council's perspective, they want to know what kind of time frames are out there in terms of projects, in terms of budgets going out and money coming back in, so money going back out in terms of drawdowns. Is this part of the phased development? Um, I just think yes there because uh, you can provide details. So let's say this is only part of a wider project. 
So we're, we're, we're working on a project at the moment that we're looking at multi sources of funds to get the project done. And we're looking at the recent phases of the project. So in this situation, again, it's something made up. We will say we received 5,000 euros from NWPD on the leader program to carry out initial works. Um, the study identified potential development costs. No funding has been applied for relation to CAP works and to this project. So what we're saying there is that, yes, this project is going to be bigger than this, what we're applying for, but we're only applying for this element of the project through this fund. We're not applying for any other source for this, 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 this project. If they allow you to apply for grant aid and match that grant aid with another grant, that's fine. But in some cases, some grants, they don't allow you to do that. You can't have like multi fund, multi, you know, a kind of a multiple grants going towards the same project. Okay. But if the project can split into different elements in different phases, then that's okay. Um, so what we're, what we're saying here is that this part of a wider thing. And what, what would we do there is the reason why we would say that is because we're showing that this will allow us to, to develop a phase of the project or get the project started. And without this kind of kickstart the funding, we might never do it. Okay. Now, given the community activities fund is for a wide range of, of, of things like, say, insurance and IT and utilities and all that, it might be as, as relevant and this, this, this application as others. But if you're looking at capital funding um, for, for larger grant applications down the line, it's important that you kind of show them that this, this is a phased project and it's only one element of it. Okay, as you might be talking about a massive project in, in the greater scheme of things, and this might be only a tiny part of it, um, and only do certain parts, but that's all you're looking for is a small part of the overall project, if that, if that makes sense. Okay, and some people put in our overall project costs are half a million, and we're looking for 5,000 euros. That doesn't make any sense to anyone. So we said, okay, this 5,000 euros, even though it won't go anywhere near a full project, it will allow us to do a certain elements of it. Okay, and um, so that's that's why we put in that in terms of that's linked to other projects. If it is, if it's not just click no and does ask any questions. Okay, so I just guess, but it's, it, it just to show you. And um, next question is the, the amount you're applying for. <clears throat> so again, if you're not too sure what the limits are, so if you, if you if there's a limit in terms of the minimum grant and the maximum grant, if that's not stated, you can make 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 an inquiry and ask what's the maximum grant we can put in for. Because let's say the maximum grant is only two thousand euros, no point putting in for like fifteen thousand euros because it's just a waste of time. So if it's not clearly stated, ask what the maximum grants are, um, or, or kind of a rough estimate in terms of what kind of you know amount of grants would be would be would be acceptable in terms of what you're applying for. Um, again, so you put in the figure there, again, it's made up that figure of 5,000 euros. Uh, is the amount of partial or total project cost? It's, it's partial. Um, so what's the total facilities costs then and ask for? So if I put in here's total costs, it doesn't ask me any more questions. If I put in partial costs, I've got to show the full costs and then where that money is going to come from. Okay. So if you're if you're looking to say we're looking for 500 euros for the insurance and you take that's total cost, you won't be asked to put in any other information about matching funds because you don't need any matching funds for it. Okay. Um does that make sense? So again, if it's parish cost, put in the, the, the total project cost and then where the matching funds are going to come from. So I just put in there again, made us up all fundraising 35,000 euros and raised, we're looking for additional 5,000 euros to complete the project. Um, okay, the next part of the question then is, is the, the uploading your documents. So at the beginning of the workshop, I was saying about having your project file and I showed you the project file. So what I do is very simply, it looks for three quotations, okay? I go to select, select, select file, um, I go to, of course it wasn't there. Um, It was my grant file, and I go into sample quote, and I go open. Okay, so here's my sample quote. I go into next one, um, again, select file, my sample quote number two, and there it is. And I go to the next one, and it's sample quote number three, and I go open. because I have all those documents on file ready to go. I'm not searching frantically, which I kind of searched during this, but I'm not searching frantically. For an hour and a half trying to find where's that quotation back to emails and all that kind of stuff, right? Head wrecking, crazy stuff. Um, so I make sure that they'll and I make sure I check them in so I actually go into them. Um, and I make sure that they're actually they're 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 correct. 
um, and that the, they're the right quotation for the right project. Very important, make sure the quotation is dated. Okay, so if you get a quotation from anyone, make sure they put the date on it. There's no requirement for these quotations to be signed, but I normally I normally ask for them to be signed anyway as well. Um, but make sure they're dated because those quotations probably go back from years ago. Um, if they're dated, then they're up to date, relevant quotations. Okay, very important. Um, so again, operation money costs. So if, you're, if your application is relating to operation money costs, not for equipment, please provide support for documentation. This could include example of utility bills. If you're unclear what to provide, then you contact the department and the council and they'll, they'll give you direction on this one. So for example, let's say you're providing, um, you're looking for support towards paying your rent, for example, right? Um, you, you can provide your, your bank statement showing that the rent payments are going out, where you highlight the rent payments and it's not very clear on your bank statement. If it's something like say you're looking for support for utility bills, again, you get a copy of your last you know, electric iron bill. Um, and so there's a copy of the electric iron bill. If it's insurance, you might have an insurance quotation from a broker. Um, again, you know, a letter from the broker showing what the policy details are, your policy documentation, your renewal documentation, they're all proof of the, of the, of the expenditure, okay? So you can't just say that we need 800 euros towards utility bills. You've got to back it up with proof, okay? And there is your, your the support application. Utility bills are our bank statements. Again, you click on select file and you go to your bank statement and there's your bank statement, okay? And what I would do there is I go to the bank statement, highlights on the bank statements, the, the, the amount that, that, that you're looking at in the reference to it, okay? So they're not going through, they're not asking someone to the council to go through three pages of your bank statement trying to find out where, where's the, where's the voter form, where's, where's the rent, where's the utility bills, highlight them, you know? And mark it on with a, with a narrow or an X or an asterisk and say, this is what we're referring to in the application, okay? So again, make it as easy as possible. Again, the amount that you're, you're applying for um, in terms of running costs, let's say 500 euros towards, towards your bills. And then it calculates automatically what you're actually applying for. Five grand for equipment, 500 euros for running costs, okay? Um, the last question asked them for is, please state how your group proposes to publicly acknowledge the Department of Rural Community and Development, Curriculum Council. Standard one here, um, again, um, any, any application that you're doing that asks how are you going to acknowledge the fund and who gave it funding, so whether it be Craig Van Council in this situation or if it's leader or if it's Pummel or the sports department or whatever. So we normally say that brand the signage would be included, including, so brand the signage at, at the project, so let's say it's works to the building, we put up a sign saying this project was kindly supported by Craig Van Council or by whatever organization. Acknowledgement to save interest of the guards. So in this case, it's the garden project. Again, we'll come back to acknowledgement in um, all press releases. So if you're on the radio, maybe carry, if you're in the carry's eye, carry man, they're mentioned. Any logos, etc., would be on the website. So it's part of your, 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 your logos for your sponsors. Carry Council logo will be on there and on your social media pages. And the last one would be, uh, I don't know what there. As well, in some cases, we put in that um, uh, personnel from Kerry County Council will be invited to the official launch of the garden or the project, whatever it might be. Okay. The key thing is that you're showing that you're recognizing their support. So, branding is really important. You know, the sign of the gate saying supported by um, that's really, really important. Okay. Um, and you're just basically putting in there, you're saying in the application how you're going to do it. Okay. So, next year, um, I should make move on. So, you put in the name of the person making the declaration. So, Tom O'Leary. And you sign it. So you can sign us. Um, you can select an image. So I can go in and, and basically download my 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 signature, and, and put it in there. Um, or I can take a photograph of the image, of the sorry of the the signature, and it goes up there. Um, I think you can actually yeah you can actually put in if you're good at using <laughs> your mouse, and you can put in your your signature that way. Okay. So there's different ways, which is actually a nice way of doing it because you can do it different ways. In some situations, they don't look for a signature, your name and your, your declaration is all they look for, okay? Position in the group, again, I'll put in PRO and the date of declaration. So today's date is the 16th of February. Um, um, and I, yes, make declaration. And then it's, well, I'm not going to submit this because I don't want to be getting five, tall, five and a half dollars of jurors off Kerry County Council for a project I just made up. <laughs> so I don't want to submit it. But you know, if it hits a minute, it's gone, okay? No, I, I might try it, but I'm not going to because there should be a, a warning comes up. To make, you know, normally there is to make sure you are ready to submit. 
but I'm not going to take that chance tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then ask if Thomas asked to bring care controls tomorrow and ask him to beat the application, please. <laughs> so again, just submit, but again, you, uh, before you submit, you go back through everything and you go back and make sure everything's correct. As I said before, get someone else within the committee to look through us, make sure they're happy with us. If you've got to get it signed up and by a board, rather than bringing the laptop into the board and showing this, print it off, go through the detail of us, make sure they're happy with us. Read it again, read it again, read it again, check the, the documentation that you've uploaded, make sure the correct documentation, you have about five times, check everything over and over and over and over again, right? Because once it's gone, then you can sleep well that night thinking I've done as much as I possibly can, this is gone. Rather than wake up at four o'clock in the morning thinking, oh geez, I forgot to submit the application, or sorry, I forgot to submit the quotation of the application, okay? Look, in this situation, it was five and a half thousand euros as a made up number. Let's say it's 1,000 euros, 500, doesn't make a difference. Spend the time and make sure it's done right before you submit it, okay? Really, really important. Um, so that's the community activities one. Um, I'm going to just close that one down. This is the community support fund, um, which is, again, another portal. I'm not going to go through this in detail because it's pretty much the exact same as the other one, okay? Um, so again, you've got the terms and condition, you've got your you've got your guide to use the application form, um, you've got your extended deadline from 28th of February, um, and again, you're going through it very similar to the other one. So that's why I was saying earlier on, I think to Joan, where if you've got this in a Word document, it's simply cut and paste, cut and paste, cut and paste, because it's pretty much all the same information you're providing. So again, same information, um, where you're located, the, the year code again. Um, sorry. Okay, so again, the location, the brief description of the group, similar to the last one, are you a limited company? Yes, no, if you're not in, if you're not in the company, you say no, that's fine, you can be your R. Is your group registered PPN? Yes, it is. Again, committee members, it looks for here, so I put in this name, the made up committee members. Um, contact details, again, first contact person's name, uh, all terms of contact person's name, exact same as the other application. Um, click next. Um, again, this district, same as our application, it should be again. Now with this phone, there's three, there's, there's, there's four categories. So it's rebuilding and reconnecting communities, community society towns, community economic innovation, and community-based tourism festivals and events, okay? It's important to read the guidelines because you need to see what project, sorry, what category your project falls under, okay? Very important. If you're not too sure, again, ring and ask. Say, look, this is what we're doing. What category do we fall under? I would think most of your projects will fall under the first two. Okay, and you know I said the like, majority of parts will fall in the first because there's more kind of more generic um, um, criteria. Um, the last one, obviously, if you're a tourism or a festival or events, you, you fall in the back category. This one's more around, let's say, kind of public realm works, um, kind of streetscape works. You know, again, maybe some alliance or chamber of commerce might be fine there. Or if you're you're, you're doing works within Titan, again, Titans with just working with maybe local retailers around improving you know uh, shop fronts and stuff like that. We'll come under this one here. Um, does your project involve property? Again, if you click yes, are you the owner of the property? Same as last, last application form, pretty much the exact same really. Why do you need the grant and how will the funding be used? Exam same as the last one. So it's the same cut and paste. Um, just be careful though that when you're cutting and pasting that it is for similar projects. Some people are going to have the cut and pasting and they don't change any wording. And what you're putting in isn't really relevant to the application form. The only thing I would suggest is if it's obviously for the same type of project, that's fine. You just make sure you, you tweak it slightly to, to match the questions being asked. The only time really you cut and paste for, for all other applications is, is things like your, your contact details, your, your company organization profile, your purpose, your aims, objectives, all that kind of stuff, because that's the generic to everything. Um, these will change. No, I, reason, I cut and paste these because they are pretty much the same, same project we'll be applying for. Um, who will the grant, who will benefit from this grant and what do you have to achieve? So again, it goes back to our impact, right? So who will benefit from the grant and what will be the, what will be the impact of, of the project on them, okay? So again, fairly limited there in terms of the amount of characters you're allowed. Um, so again, you gotta be fairly you know, clear in terms of concise in terms of the editing in terms of what you put in there. When did your project begin? Again, similar thing, you have to put in a date. Um, I put in a dummy date there um, again. And then when do you expect the project to be completed? Again, put in a date there. 
they're not going to stick you to the state. Just be realistic with it, okay? Um, and just you know, it should be a project that's going to be completed in a very short period of time. Is a grant for a specific event? Um, again, yes. Um, what's the date of your event? So, for example, if you're doing a tourism festival event that you're applying for, and let's say that event is going to happen on the, the August Bank Holiday weekend, you put in the date of the August Bank Holiday, Bank Holiday weekend because for a specific event happening at a specific time. If you're doing a biodiversity project, there's no specific date for that. So, we just put in a, kind of a rough idea of a start date. Okay. Um, so, this question is important <coughs> for, for the community services support, sorry, community support fund. Remember on, on the first part of the workshop, I said about the strategic context and how your project should meet with national policy, local policy. In this fund, this application form, it asks you very clearly, please tell us how your project will contribute to locally agreed community priorities in your area in relation to your project proposal, right? If you have no idea what those community priorities are, they don't go making them up, right? Don't go writing some kind of fiction in there. Not too sure. Contact, you know, I'll just go back to your, if it is a local area plan for your, your municipal district area, that would be the guideline in terms of policies. Look at the, the draft development plan at the moment that's out there with, with, in, in the council website, see what's relevant to your project and relevant to your area, or talk to, to your local municipal district officer or your local development um, officer in, in NAWKD or South Carolina Development Partnership and find out what are the priorities and what are the priorities of the fund, what are the priorities in terms of policy account council level and how does our project tie in with those okay so what we put in here again is it's wording is we've consulted with the MD officer and engineer for the local area we've consulted with the legal development officer to make sure the objectives of the project are relevant to the community priorities okay if you put that in and you haven't consulted with them they won't know because they're going to be ones that are going to be assessing the application or, or being asked uh, their opinion on the application and they say, well, you were, you were consulted by Tom O'Leary about this project. No, I wasn't. Okay, no, you basically lied on the application form. Okay, so the chance of getting funding would be spent. So it's really important that, that if you're not aware of the priorities, you know, don't be guessing what they are. Ask up the phone and say, what are the priorities? You know, let me know what they are and see does my project fit in them. If your project doesn't fit in with the priorities and it's not obvious, look at how it can fit in with priorities. Don't make up the project, but look at how you can see how your project, which might be as obvious, how it's going to support those community priorities. Okay, really important. Very important. This it's asked, asked for in this application. It's not in the other one. Really important though that you get this one right because it has to tie in with, with those um, with those priorities local level. Um, what's the total cost of your project? Uh, again, how much funding you're funding you're applying for? If you're applying for less than the total project cost, how will you fund the remainder? I said we're going to fundraise 20 grand towards project be a local fundraiser and sponsorship. Is this a complete new project or is it part of a phase development? Again, if it's part of a phase development. Um, again, if it, you know, again, if I put a new project, um, again, indicate the level of support raised through local fundraising. So I put in 50% of the lo raised locally through an online fundraiser and contributions. Uh, please tell us who you apply to as a result of other funding applications in respect to the project. Again, I just put in here that we got 5,000 viewers of the fund from leader for a feasibility study. And no funding has been applied for relation to the works involved. So again, it's the same as what we put in for the last one. Have you received grants from Kerry County Council in the past three years? If you click no again because you want to fill in the details, they're going to know you're applying to Kerry County Council for the grant. They're going to know if you've applied, applied previously. So you click yes, okay, uh, and then pro provide the details that you got from in terms of the funding you got from Kerry County Council. Again, um, put in the elements of the work that you're applying for. So site works landscaping. And the cost, okay. Now you can add you can add more and more here. So if you're doing like say four or five different pieces of work, you can add you can add those in, okay. So it allows you to put in different elements of work. But bear in mind that you put in different elements of works, you have to provide quotations for those elements of the works. So if you're doing four or five different pieces of works, you got to put in quotations. So if you're doing let's say garden project for landscaping, quotation, planting, plants and shrubs from a garden center quotation, and then assignment the gate. From the printing company, more quotations. Okay, so again, um, typically you might want to get maybe one contractor to do the whole thing for you. So there's only one, one, you know, three quotations re required in from three, three contractors. I suppose to have three quotations from maybe five, six, or seven different elements of works. Again, um, your supporting documentation, your 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 quotations. So again, so I'm just real quick. Um, okay. 
Um, tax reference numbers, again, on file, revenue access number, on file, charge number of files. So there's my tax reference, there's my access number, there's my, my charge regulation number, there's my CHY number of revenue, okay, for, for my, my charge status. Um, if you currently have a tax reference and reference number, um, so that from revenue commissioner's data. So basically this is again looking to submit this. So again, I have this in file. This is your base, your tax clearance details. Um, so I have a tax clearance here. There's a tax clearance um, printout from, from, from Ross that I provided. Again, same as last time, how are you going to public acknowledge credit card balance support? Same as last time, click on next. Um, is there any, so this is where, now, unlike the other one, this is where you can put in additional information, right? So you can put in your, 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 your sales pitch here, so why you should get the project, put your funding. So you can put in a thousand characters, you can put in a bit more detail about the project and go through the project in a bit more detail and, and say why you should get funding and why it's going to support the local community, okay? You can put in, as well in this, doc, in this application, supporting documentation. So let's say you're a Titans group, you can put in the Titans report you got, your last Titans report and score you got from, from the Titans competition. If you've done a safe feasibility study for a project, you can submit that feasibility study also. So in this case, I've done a feasibility study and I want to put my feasibility study in here. And if I'm doing that, what I will do throughout the document is I will say, please refer to page 48 of the feasibility study, which provides more detail about this project. Okay, no, they might go to page 40 or they mightn't, but you're given the option to get more information and get more background details about the project. Okay, so references within within the application form. And again, going down, then you you again you put in um you check, make sure you've done the information provided. I've read and understand the agreement, the terms and conditions, I completed the, the completion report. I'm sorry, we'll complete the completion completion report within six months. So in other words, this is declaring that you, you, you ticked all the boxes here. Again, sign the thing with my signature and position the group, the date of the, of the declaration, and again, submit, okay? So as you can see, these are two separate um, applications for two separate funds with very similar portals, right? And if you, and this is both from Carry Control, so if you were to go on another portal in two weeks time for another project from the community, fund, community foundation or under any other department, you will notice that the application forms are very similar, looking for similar information. That's why I was saying at the very beginning, do a generic application, have it there, ready there, sitting there, so you can use it as a template for future ones, okay? We do a lot of these. So we, 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 we you know, the more and more you do, the better you get at it, okay? So it's practice, 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 practice. There is certain kind of things, as I mentioned earlier on, around like, you know, you're, you're, you're showing how it's relevant to local national policies. By putting that in your application form is important, showing how your project is, is, is relevant in terms of the purpose of the grant and the purpose of your project. Again, showing things like, you know, putting in, say, supplementary documentation here if you're allowed to and referencing that within the application form. Using this, you know, go and say, or oh, not applicable here, not completing it. That's, that's an opportunity for you to sell your project again in more detail. Okay, use it. Okay, you're not going to get in front of the chance to sit in front of them. You're not going to be called for interview. You got to sell it in the application form. So use this, use this as 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 more information you can provide them with, and um, that's relevant to the project. And it's going to it's going to convince them that you should be getting funding as opposed to someone else who didn't fill in this application form part or sorry section. Um, so you, you get you know an up hand over them. Okay, so as you can see, they're not overly complex application forms. Um, what I would say to you is that what will catch you out if you're not prepared and you only have roughly 10 or so days there thereabouts to get this done, what will slow you up is um, promoting will be quotations. Okay, so I would say get on that case pretty quickly, get those quotations in very, very quickly. Um, now, if it's only your, your overheads you're looking to get covered under the Community, Act, Community Activities Fund, that's when you get your bank statement and that kind of what your, your bills and stuff are, or get a copy of your bill. That's straightforward. If you're doing work, say, on the community support fund, capital works, people are very, very busy. Right? If you ask a tradesperson for a quotation, you'd be hounding them to get the quotation anyway, because they're just flat to the mass. So you're going to be at them, have you got that quotation, have you got that quotation? If you leave it to like literally, you know, Friday a week to start chasing these quotations, you will not have them in time for the 28th. That is guaranteed. 
So I would say if you're looking at project now and you know what you're applying for and what you want, I would be suggesting from tomorrow you're looking for those quotations you have them in place, okay? But you can't leave it to the last minute with, with this sort of stuff. Um, other documentation that's requested there, you should have anyway, your tax numbers, all that. That shouldn't be that difficult to find. If you can't find them, there's issues beyond the application form that you have. Um, so again, just, just on the quotations, I'd be kind of, that is one area that you, 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 will, you will miss a deadline because of, okay? Um, just going to go into the questions here. Um, any other questions, three quotes? Uh, okay, that's just one that's the question there, answer the question, okay? Um, okay, great. So the questions I think there, fairness were answered in a lot of the things have been finished. Do you apply for? Yeah, thanks very much, Yvonne, for uh, for coming in and answering some of the questions. It's it's great to have you here. Yeah, um, so I think most of those questions were answered, is it? Yeah. I think so, going down through them. Yeah. And just on the quotes, Tom, as well, because the, the Kerry PPN will be putting in an application and you're spot on for the quotes because I've sent off an email and one of them came back and said that they'd link in um, on Friday, but that's just about my query. So I'm actually hugely grateful that it has been extended um, because getting the quotes is just, it takes a little bit longer than, than you think, really. It does. Like we, we were in, a, in another project completely and a different grant. Um, no, it's not a recent one, it's one before, just before Christmas. We were applying for a grant for another project and um, we contacted a number of different uh, tradespeople and they, they, they were actually warranting willing to give quotations, they were so busy. Um, and we ended up going to, you know, like literally going all, all over the county to find, to find some to actually use a quotation, you know. And the problem there is that you get a quotation in from, say, Joe Bloggs is living somewhere, you know, that you don't want to use because it's not in your local area. Then the grant's approved and you want to use someone locally, but you can't because you have that quotation from that person locally. So, you know, give it time because, they, you know, everyone's really, really busy. Um, so, you know, give, just don't leave it last minute for quotations. Everything else, you know, you can get done as quick as you want to get done you have all the information kind of ready anyway but the rest you really um you really need to look at um as um having the right you know having quotations in advance and kind of uh, organized in advance there was one thing they put in there it did and and i appreciate that we have run over a bit but i hope that you found it hugely worthwhile going through the whole process because sometimes it is just worth taking that little bit extra time to see exactly what is involved and what you need to do so uh thanks tom for for yeah. going over and for all the questions and there's actually um another one in there now i saw just Thank about you. when will the clubs be notified of their application Um, thank you, Mon. Just from the Community Support Fund perspective, I, they, and Henry Lynch is here as well. She's the Municipal District Officer in um, Kirkogreen and Castle Island. So just to acknowledge that um, also. But um, we have the assessment going through February, March. The, 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 it's the Community Support Fund is actually the councillors make the final decision. And on the week, it's the week of the 22nd, 23rd of March. Um, there, there are full day meetings there with the, each of the municipal district um, members, the councillors in each of the municipal districts where the final decisions will be made. So it, I presume normally the decisions are even communicated from those meetings. I know that the groups get, <laughs> groups get emails and get, uh, get texts and that kind of thing. So it would, it, that week, the week after Patrick's, uh, the Bank Holiday weekend, and I think, Siobhan, it would be a good idea as well. And, and Anne-Marie, thanks a million for being there as well, that if some of the groups want a bit of clarity, that they can contact you and have a, and talk it out with you as well for guidance. I was just going to say there, Joan asked a question about checking. We understand how difficult it is to get um, um, quotations, but I think once you can prove that you've you have tried and I know if it's a specific kind of like in your case to do with murals or something like that and it might only be one or two suppliers I think that that will actually be um, taken into consideration because obviously the community support fund is managed by Kerry County Council 
the community activities fund actually is department funding so it's slightly yeah. different it's subject to different kind of monitoring in one way in that um all the projects that come in under the community activities fund they're approved by the local community development committee and they actually then have to be submitted to the department in dublin you know and could be subject to audit by the department you know so it, they're slightly different guidance even though the applications are the same but i think it's for the protection of the groups that the governance is as we've become some way i suppose more rigid over the last few years but it, it actually protects the groups in in the long run i think and and protects the us, us all working with the groups as well you know so thank you quite on that Siobhan, just as a follow-up for that and this is probably relevant to a lot of a lot of all events as well what we can recommend is if you're getting quotations from suppliers or trace people get an email to you as well because you have the email coming in and status so you can prove that that was, was received before the deadline email them. Exactly. You know, yeah. For all the purposes that Shawan mentioned there, the departments look at when the when the when the quotations were received, and you got to prove that they were received before before the deadline and before the bank went in. Because you know, not that they won't be trusted, but if you've got a, an email trail saying but well, we we sent out an email looking for a quotation, we got the quotation back by email. At this stage, you can actually prove that that came in as well. So it's, it's very and it's not really to it's about Shawan says about protecting yourselves as well. Mm -hmm. That if you ever are audited, that you've got everything you've done, mm -hmm. you everything you possibly could do to make sure that everything was done properly, rather than giving any that kind of any doubt in their mind that you know you're trying to pull a fast one or whatever. So you know everything by email is really important. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. Um, you're on mute, there, Caroline. Uh, Tom. Yeah, John. Yeah. Uh, I missed the, the start there. You were talking about downloading to Word. Yeah. Uh, so that you could essentially, I suppose, use it as a kind of a rough draft. Mm -hmm. uh, were you talking about downloading the actual application form? No, oh, John, you, not downloading it, such literally just kind of typing out the sections. And um, so I would like literally just replicate the, the, the application form on a Word document. On a Word document. Yeah, so I put in section 1.4, put in the detail, you know, that kind of, so I literally just type out the application form on a Word document. Yes, and uh, yeah. use that yeah. as, a, as a draft yeah. before Absolutely. you complete. Yeah. Yes, yeah. lovely. Thanks, Tom. Okay, is that everything or is that okay? Absolutely, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, Karen, yeah. Some, some, sometimes the laptop acts up, but just to let everybody know, we'll have the information out to them in the, in the next two days. So everything that you've presented this evening, Tom, we'll have it out to everybody yeah. here okay. tonight as well. So they'll be able to, to make okay. use of it as well. Yeah. And the best of everyone. Uh, this is fine. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Thank Thanks you everybody. all so much Thanks for lot, coming Tom. along and staying with us for the night. Fantastic. It was terrific all together. Thank, Thank you. Yeah. Bye. 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 Here, good night. Bye bye. bye.